and a perfect intro what's going on everybody it's the knucklehead comics it's tuesday you know what that is we got a special guest in the building the, the writer and creator of neo thor and six and eight michael what's going on man how you doing what's up fellas i'm all right how you guys doing chilling man chilling yo as always we got to my left your right we got lay what's going on lay man, it's chilling man uh, just gonna glad to be here and happy about to do this i hear that and i'm hearing your echo always always on the bottom we got cabs in the building what's going on cabs i'm hearing the i'm hearing the stream you're hearing the stream yeah who stream you yours i'm hearing yours yeah i can hear it you can hear now can you hear it still nope we're good now all right there you go. Not all right. There you go. <laughs> and now, what's up, everybody? <laughs> That's what Cabs happens in, when you go live. <laughs> Cabs in the building. Tion eating a late dinner because work was a little crazy today. Green juice in the building. There you go. But yo, as always, show is running late. He might be here earlier than he's usually is when he's running late. And uh, Cap mm -hmm. couldn't make it today, so. He he should be in the comics if y'all want to talk about Cap. But Mike, what's going on, man? Uh, the first question I got for you is how well, before much? That, be oh, before oh, okay. that, before 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 you you don't gotta go too much. Oh, I thought you were gonna just go straight I was into gonna questions. Say that in chapter six, volume yeah, yeah. two. No, no, no. I was yeah, I was gonna get into that part. But go ahead, Mike. All right. Uh, so I'll just basically give you the quick and dirty version. Uh, sure. You know, I grew up uh, reading comics, and for whatever reason, I had the idea, the crazy idea that I could write comics too. Awesome. So I've been trying to write and trying to get into the business. Uh, even since I was like 11 years old, I think that was like the first time that I sent a thing to Marvel when, wow. I, was, when I was 11. And um, then I, I kept trying throughout high school and just after high school, sent a bunch of stuff to Dark Horse, um, but nothing ever came of it. And I kind of got out of comics and I got more into like film and video kind of stuff, writing screenplays and things like that. And um uh, so I just basically forgot all about comics for maybe like 10, 15 years. And um, I was living in China and I had found out about the, you know, like uh, Kickstarter, Comixology, all this, you know, the Internet explosion where, you know, it's much easier now to make a comic, produce a comic, and get it out there. Sure. Because you have all these online things that you where you can reach everybody all over the world now. So. I, I thought about it and I was like, well, maybe I'll try one more time, see if I can uh, uh, make it this time. And that was like in 2013, I believe. And so I started writing stuff. And uh, the first book that I did was this book. This is the horror comic, 6-8. Uh, okay. And um, so that's Sick the first art. one. That, yeah, it's, it's really good. The artist is uh, Alan Burns. Uh, but... Um, so I did that one, and it was originally it was just going to be a one shot. It was just like a simple idea. I figured I'd just do one and see how it goes, and I put it up on Comicsology. Um, but the idea was always to eventually have print versions of them, um, because you know I'm old school guy. I like stuff you know you can touch and feel and lick and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so I did that one. Then I kept going with it. Um, Neotheric was like the next one that um, that I put together, and that was a um, so far it's been four issues, and I originally just put them all on Comicsology and a couple of other different websites, and um, then like two years ago I just took my own money, like tax return money, and just printed that out as a graphic novel. Um, so I have so that's that's this one, that's a graphic novel, ninety six pages um Sick. then um uh, and so i'm just i just I, like i got tons and tons of ideas and story ideas character ideas all this kind of stuff so i want to just keep building on it and keep going with it 
And so that's basically what I'm doing now. After I did Neotheric, I did this one. This is the this is the anthology. It's basically like superhero kind of anthologies, the book, uh, book of legend. Oh, snap. Well, put, put, put that up to the camera again. That looks yeah. sick. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it does. Wow. Man, that looks sick. Yeah. Yeah. That, okay, that, yeah. that cover is by, I forgot what his first name is, uh, Arosa. Um, that's it. That's his name. He's the first uh, name on there. I can't, uh, I'm killing myself because I can't remember his first name. But um, yeah, this is an awesome cover. He's an awesome artist. Um, so I did. So last year I did uh, uh, Kickstarters for to print six eight and then Book of Legend. I did those two Kickstarters, and it, you know, was, I just barely got enough money to do like a small print run. So you know, I'm, it's only like six seven hundred bucks. Um, but the idea is to try to you know build a foundation and try to slowly you know um, make more people aware of what I'm doing so I can do bigger projects. And that's what this one I'm going to be doing now is it's called Gun Engine Zero. And this is going to be like a six or maybe seven issue mini series. And the first issue I want to launch uh, maybe in March or April sometime. So what's but, that going to be about? Sounds like Max. Yeah, this is a uh, here's a this is a little preview ash can that I, uh, I gave to people last year when they when they um for in the kickstarters i did last year it's a little uh but yeah so it's definitely it's uh i grew up with like japanese sci-fi superheroes all that Hell kind of yeah. stuff nice you, you know like, uh, like mazinger ultraman ultraman uh, yeah that's the vibes i was getting as soon as i Giver. saw it I know, i'm yeah. looking at guy Gi yeah the, the way uh, it is Kind of reminds me of that old game, yeah. that old video game, Zone of Enders. I love the yeah. art here. Wow, that's yeah, so this, good. This is by uh, Ian Wariento is the penciler, and the colorist will be uh, Anton Bandy. They both uh, work together on the Mighty Mascots, which is um, published by Alterna Comics. Mm -hmm. It's the exact same team, they, and uh, I think their their art is perfect for this book because mm -hmm. uh, so he does this and. Um, so yeah, so it's like a sci-fi superhero. Um, other things are like Rom. I don't know if you guys remember Rom Space Knight. It's an old Marvel comic book. He's all silver. Mm -hmm. Um, that was a big influence. Tron, uh, all that kind of like sci-fi stuff from like the late seventies, early eighties, but especially the Japanese stuff was the kind of stuff that I was really into, like Robotech even, you know, all that kind of stuff. So I always wanted to make something, uh, a story and a character kind of come from that. And so that's what this is. And uh, basically, it's a pretty simple story. It's just uh, you're, you have this intergalactic war that has been going on for since the dawn of time. And these two, um, two sides are now come together on Earth and in this small little town. And now humans are caught in the middle. And so wow. it's... It's uh, there's a lot more to it. There's much more layers to it, but that's just the basic uh, plot of it. And um, I do have a preview version of the um, Kickstarter campaign. Um, I don't know. I could show you. I could give you the link, and then you could go and you can actually see the rough draft of the uh, Kickstarter. But I'm not sure how to do that because I've never used this before. Yeah, uh... we'll link it. If you want, I, you can send it over um, Instagram, and I'll put it in the chat. Yeah, we'll link it. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. Got a bunch Shoot. of people in here. What's up, everybody? I hope everybody's well. Alex, thank you. Who's Alex? 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 Alex knows what's happening here. Yeah, Alex Radford. He says he's a fan of 6'8". He's, he's a fan of 6'8". Look, he says it right here. Awesome. Uh, he goes, wait, time out. This is the writer from 6'8". Holy shit. Well, you know, holy cow. So you're yeah. doing businessman stuff. Respect. I love that book, 6'8". Nice. Well, thank you very much. We got some fans much. in the building. That's, That's awesome. awesome. Yeah, yeah, it is. Right. That's good to hear. I don't usually hear that. Hell yeah. No, no. That just that just made me so happy just, just seeing that. Yo, Alex, thank you so much. Appreciate that. That's the link right there. Go check out the Kickstarter. Yep. 
Yeah, so this what that link is just a preview version of the Kickstarter. It's a very rough draft. So the prices you see, the everything is I'm still working on it. Yeah. Uh, but at least you'll ha- you'll see like the first six pages of the first issue have been uh, drawn and colored. So you'll be able to see all that there. Uh, and then some a bunch of other stuff that uh, you can see in description of the plot and all that kind of stuff uh, to give you an idea. And uh, it's really important, you know, to get uh, momentum before the campaign even starts. Absolutely. So if people can click on the notify me thing, that can really help things out because uh, this is like make or break for me, this one, you know, and all the other ones, it's kind of like I've been putting money into this stuff. You know, I've put at least about $10,000 into all the different uh, oh. books and everything, all the artwork. I've got tons of extra artwork. And um, so I can't keep doing that anymore. It's like yeah. I need to be able to get, get something back, you know, And uh, but I would love to keep being, being able to, uh, you know, make comics and tell stories and stuff. And, you know, hopefully people will like them, enjoy them. No, oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. That and yeah, it, it seems like you put a lot of effort into it. And I, I wanted to know, like, just getting uh the book done, like just writing your first comic, like how much yeah. work was that? And then you said first you sent question. you sent it out to uh Dark Horse and and the Marvel. Which one did you send? Was it a different comic than what you're publishing now, or is it no, one the, of these that comics? Was- well, like I was, what I was saying before is like I was when I was real young, I sent a bunch of stuff okay. to like uh, Dark Horse because at the time Dark Horse was the only one that would accept you know unsolicited um, projects concepts, and you know Marvel DC wouldn't take anything. You had to be a name before they would even you know talk to you. So I sent a whole bunch of stuff there. It's it's all crap, you know. I know looking back is like I know why they rejected everything. But uh, so after so after then I kind of got out of it and then this one, like I said, like in 2013 when I did uh, six eight, this is this one I submitted to like everybody, um, uh, Dark Horse, uh, Avatar, like I mean everything you know any publisher there was I you know I submitted it and nobody I never heard from anybody. So then I was like, well, screw this. I just do this myself. I don't care. What do I need to wait for somebody else to say, hey, this is good, you know, or worth it or whatever. I, mean, I know if it's worth it or not, you know, so I'm going to put put the effort behind it and do it. Sure. And um, so I got lucky. I, I found him like a really good artist. His art really fit the story, you know, perfectly. And um, we just did it. I just, you know, banged it out. And uh it's a little bumpy because it was my first time working with an artist, sure. and um, so we, we, you know, we had a little, a few little conflicts, but and that's why I kind of like I, I don't hear from him anymore. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, but we finished it, and it, you know, it got it done, and uh, uh, it's it. I kind of, you know, writing comic books because comic books are such a unique medium. Uh, it does take a, a lot of time to kind of try to perfect it or, you know, get get down into the rhythm of it. So it's definitely been a, a learning process. I'm still learning, trying to get better at it with every script that I do. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's not easy, but, you know, this is something I've always wanted to do since I was a little kid. So and now I've got the time to do it. I've, you know, I've been unemployed for like a year. And my wife is working full time, um, so I'm the stay-at-home dad. And nice. um, so I'm like, you know, I've got the time. This is my opportunity. I better just take it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If you if you if you went into into this pandemic, and you know didn't start something or continue something or or get out of it, you know, with something, then yeah, you you kind of you know wasted yeah. some time. Not that you won't get your stride later on, but you know, a lot of people did have free time this pandemic and there's a lot of cool stuff happening. We have a couple of our friends here, like, you know, Pooty, he started his YouTube channel during the pandemic and that shit blew up. Pooty's on almost at like 3,500 subscribers. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's cool. And, yeah. and best of luck, man. The, the work yeah, looks thanks. sick. Yeah. Thank you. 
the black and white fits me. so well. It looks so good. What was the name of what was the name of that one again? I, I, I want to jot that down. This this one, the the Kickstarter I'm going to be running soon. Yeah. Oh, that's part of the link. Okay. Yeah, I'll just go to the link. Yeah, right that's now. In, that's in that link now. Yeah, but yeah. it's not black and white. The the actual co- the comic will be in, in full color. Well, yeah, this, yeah, just this that, is yeah. just a little preview. Uh, no, no, sometimes a nice a nice black and white one helps too. You can probably I don't know if you can do both, but I is actually yeah I was. No, I'm just say. No, sorry. Uh, I was thinking about like I just because this was just a preview, like first six pages. I was thinking about for this Kickstarter for this to do the whole thing as an ash can. So the whole entire book will be a black and white little ash can yeah. like this. And because right. I can print this at home, it's yeah. not something that I have to go out and put a mon- whole bunch of money into and have somebody else to do it and then ship it and all that kind of crap. You know, I can just do it here. And so it would be kind of something that I don't know, maybe. Maybe people would be interested in it. Because I remember before, a couple of uh, couple a couple of weeks ago, we spoke about how the Ninja Turtles first came out. They were like real shades of gray and dark and black. And they all had yeah. the same red bandanas, same like red face masks, and they were murdering yeah. people. And I like yeah. that. <laughs> the colors. It's true. The colors were simple, right? But yeah. it added to the grittiness of what was going mm-hmm. on in the comic. You know, so it kind of like yeah. made it. You know. So yeah, I was wondering what inspired, like in the in the actual comic, the very the very first one you did. Like what, like are you a big horror fan? You know what I mean? Or is it specific uh, kind of horror? Yeah. You know, something like that. Just wondering. Yeah, uh, well, that's a good question because uh, actually I, I'm not really that much into horror. Mm-hmm. It was just because at the time, uh, like I said before, I was living in China, and I had written uh, a bunch of scripts. And I had met a low, super, super low budget uh, film producer in Hong Kong, um, not face to face, just like through emails and stuff. And I had a script that I was trying to get to Chow Yun Fat. It was a, uh, it was yeah. like a, he's somebody that I, like I, you know, I've always loved his acting for a long time. So I had, had come up with this idea for this script for him. And I had written it out and I was like, just trying to, you know, I'm there, I'm in, in China. I'm like, let me just try it and see, you know, talking to people in Hong Kong and stuff. And I found this guy's email. I sent him an email and he had read the script, but he, he's like, I like, you know, your writing and everything, but he, he's not something that he could do. It, it, this is like a big action kind of a movie and he's a super low budget kind of guy. So he said, well, hey, I have an idea for a script. Would you like to write it for me? And um, so I started writing a script for him and he paid me. And um, while I was doing that, my wife was like, well, maybe you should try to get him, you know, your own ideas, you know, pitch him your own ideas for other things. And we were watching The Walking Dead at the time in China. This is like really big. Um, This is like the first or second season. And um, and I, I guess that's the reason why she, she said it. it was like you should write a horror, th- a horror script, because we were watching The Walking Dead, and because she's not into horror either, really. It was we just happened to be watching that show, and so I was like, okay. So I had a bunch of ideas, like from when I was in high school, like ideas that were really disconnected, you know. But and then I just put them all together and uh, came up with an idea for a script, and I sent it to him but he wasn't interested in it. But I thought, uh, first I thought, well, maybe I could do this myself uh, as a short film. So what I did was I took the story and I cut it up into just the very essential elements of it to make it like a 30 minute thing. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that I thought of was like telling the story out of sequence, because I had always had an idea for a story where it didn't happen, you know, a linear story. It was like from backwards. And at the, the first scene is actually the end of the movie of the story. And you, you go backwards in time to see how it all started. Yes. <clears throat> so it's like all flipped. So then I thought, well, if this is a short film, I don't have a lot of time to go through all these different scenes. I can jump around and through a timeline and just tell things <clears throat> as I need them. And so that was one of the other components of this story. And then it all came together. And 
but I couldn't, you know, uh, I couldn't make a short film of it. So, and, and again, and then I found out more about, you know, you could make comic books and stuff. So I was like, well, let me see if I can just make it into a comic book. So I wrote it as a comic book script. And then I found the artist and then we just went ahead and made it. So this story <clears throat> is the story jumps around in time. It doesn't happen linearly. And it's um you actually got some praise for that in the in the chat. Cap yeah. that was supposed to be here with us, who actually like went and read uh your stuff and he said he's a big fan of six eight. He actually praised you for the non-linear story. You just yeah. you just answered the questions he had written down for you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like I would that's why I was letting you go. I was like, I'm hitting them up. I'm like, you still watching? I'm about to ask the questions. By the and way, you Amy's just answered the them. I'm hey, like, Amy, what's up? And I'm like, Yo, my, my man's making this easy. <laughs> I just gotta think of the questions, and you got this. It's like, it's yeah, beautiful. I, I, I know. <laughs> he literally just said it right little, little mind melding going on right there. It's just happening. Yeah. yeah. Yo, Amy, Amy, that that's that's South Africa, right? Yes. Yep. Yes. That's, yep. That's, yes. That's, that's we just African spoke friend. about yep. you earlier, Amy. Glad that you came through. Thank you so much. That's awesome. South Africa in the little, building. So ultimately, you took whatever that script was and made it that comic. Yeah, so it's, it originally started out as a full-length feature film. I, you know, pared it all down to a short film, and then I just transferred it over to a comic book script. And again, I'm learning about how the comic book medium is different from, you know, live-action film and stuff. And I mean, obviously, there's, I mean, there's obvious differences, but you know, in general, there are a lot of things that are similar. But to really, I think to really um, do the medium service the i i'm really conscious of the page turn yeah. and i try to make it so that every page has like a cliffhanger so like there's a real motivation or impetus for you to you know turn a page and every single page it's not just you know like at certain times so you don't want you don't want somebody to drop it, pick up their phone. You want to be like, okay, like I need to know yeah. what's gonna happen in this next page. Yeah, I hear that. Yeah, yeah. You gotta so like if you, yeah, exactly. And so, like if you have somebody who's throwing a punch, mm -hmm. I don't want to see the contact until the next page. Because mm -hmm. you know, you're building up the anticipation, but you don't show it until the next page. So I'm very conscious of that and I try to uh you know, do everything, even, you know, what, whatever it is, if it's horror or whatever, but to have that kind of a, you know, um, a method to, uh, to work the story. But yeah, so this was, uh, so again, it, it was supposed to be just a one shot thing, but when the artist was doing the, the art, I just thought about, well, <clears throat> what would happen to these characters for the rest of their lives? You know, what would be the repercussions of this? going forward so I and mean, i came up with things that i think would make for an interesting story and it's not just repeating the same thing from this story there's an actual growth to the characters there's a total difference about what happens and how they react and how everything you know plays out and so i've got the the second chapter would be four issues and i've already written the first two issues and I would like to do the first issue this year, like so it can be ready for Halloween. So I have oh, this sick. one. And I also have a horror anthology that I'm doing right now. The art's all being done right now. It's going to have like five or maybe six stories in it. So I want to have those two books this year for Halloween. Cool. So I have, I have a quick question. So like, sure. you know, clearly you've been... You've been writing for a while. You know, you sounds like you've dipped in and out of the industry at certain points. You know, made some contacts, and you know that's what's up. But like, you know, as a writer, you know, people always talk about the writer's block and and you know getting to those areas where you know you're not necessarily sure what to write. So you know, how do you deal with the writer's block and, and staying motivated and staying in the game? And and is there anything that you look to when you just completely want to get away from writing? and comics to make you come back even like stronger? Yeah. Um, I think the main thing that I do to avoid writer's block is to have a whole bunch of different projects. Sure. That way so that if one project, I kind of, you know, come to a point where I don't know what the hell I should do. I just leave it 
go to another project, you know, get my mind, you know, into that one. And then later I can come back to the, the first project with a fresh perspective, a fresh, you know, you know, um, view of it. And then maybe something will come up from there. So it's also kind of a double edged sword because I know I got like a lot of stuff on my plate and sometimes I think it's too much stuff mm -hmm. and I should, you know, kind of focus more, but I think having more multiple projects helps to avoid writer's block because like I said, you can just jump to the next thing and then come back. But I mean, I have had like, oh, I was saying with the, with that guy in Hong Kong, I was writing a script for him. There were times when, you know, I was trying to figure out the ending of the story and I could not figure out like a good ending, a unique and interesting ending. And I, I would just like rack my brain like all day long for weeks at a time. And I was like, I don't know what should happen. And it's just, finally it just comes, you know, I can, you just got to keep at it. I think it's people like uh, Stephen King. It's like, you know, you got to look at it as like a job, just like any other job sure. is you got to get up in the morning and just sit down and just start banging away. Even if you only write like one sentence, you just got to do it. And, you know, having that sort of routine, I think can help you avoid, you know, like blocks and stuff like that. Nice. And no, we have uh, Amy, we have Amy that just said, I've been dealing yeah. with artistic block for the past two years or so. So I would love to hear these tips. Yeah. What's, <clears throat> what's something, and my, I'm sorry, Le, you know, oh, for, for, for Amy, what's something that like when you like, you know, I know you said you got to keep going, but is there anything that you go to outside of the medium to sort of just, you know, get away and do something else? And, you know, maybe whether it's video games, sports, you know, oh, maybe yeah. going to check out the movies, anything <laughs> like that, that is a yeah, go-to for, sure. for when you're uh, going through a block? Well, all of that. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> uh, I mean that, yeah, that's a, that's a good point. It's like, that's the other thing I do. I play video games sometimes, got an Xbox, you know, sometimes I just want to zone out. I don't want to think about anything. Sure. It helps to kind of like, you know, take things off your mind, just play video games or, you know, go see a movie and watch movies with my kids, whatever. Just go outside, um, you know, just be part of life, you know. It's, it, ideas and inspiration can come from anything, anything. Like you go outside, you hear a conversation between two people and it's like, oh, that's like what somebody could say or something like that. So for sure, if you, I, I would say if it's like so bad that you can't really come up with anything and it feels like a ton of pressure, just leave it and then go, go do other stuff, anything outside or whatever. And you never know where some kind of an answer can come from something else, like playing a video game or watching a movie and you're saying, you know, something happens in the movie and you're like, oh, wait, so if, if it was a little bit different than what happened in the movie, I could use that in my story and all this kind of stuff. So you can get inspiration from anything. And, and yeah, that's a good point. It's just like, just do whatever. Regardless of the job, it's always important to go outside, kids. Yeah. Go outside, do go outside. a lap around the block. Like when I was working from home the last two years, you know, sometimes I'd get an email from a guest or within the company that's just like, took me out. Like, I'm going to need to go back to sleep. I need another 15, 20. Go outside, man. Going outside helps. Around the, yeah. Go around the block, get some sun. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, and we have we actually have a question from La Flaca. And then afterwards, Le, you can go. And I oh, think no, you please. touched on this uh, a little bit, Mike. You know, going back to all of your high school stuff and, and and whatever you wrote back then. And you know, but she asked, does free writing help with creating a storyline later on? What what is free writing? Like what just, does she mean by free just, writing? Just jotting stuff down and <clears throat> just writing and anything that comes to mind to and using it later. Oh well, yeah, I do that all the time too. It's or like you got your phone, and you can have like a you know take a like voice audio notes. notes. Yeah, voice notes, or you can take right now. I come up with ideas because I used to before I was unemployed. I was a power sports mechanic, worked on motorcycles and all that kind of stuff. Oh. So I would have like a notebook on my toolbox, and I would just be working on something, and an idea could pop in my head, and it's oh I got to write this down because I'll forget it. If I don't yeah. write it down, yeah, uh, I got so much stuff now 
that if if I don't write it down, I'll forget it. Mm-hmm. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I would definitely like you know if you gotta if you want to use like a notebook, you know, carry like a little one you could put in your pocket or something. You can like write down notes and stuff anytime, and because yeah, some of them. I got you, Flaka. It's actually like six eight. The original idea, the image, the one thing that that sparked all of this was one time when I was in high school. I was at home by myself. I was walking in the kitchen past the refrigerator, and it, for whatever reason, it looked to me like there was a person standing yes. behind the refrigerator, <laughs> between the refrigerator and the wall. It's like a tiny little space. And for I don't know why the hell my mind created that image, but it like I was like, what the fuck? And <laughs> that that kind of um, and that is in this book. That image, that thing, is where a guy who sees what looks like a person behind a door where there's only like this much space. So I put that in this story, and but that that one little thing is what eventually led to all of this. So like, you never know where stuff is gonna come from. So yeah, that's it. It's that's funny. So cool. You, just a, a at night, from inspiration, you always yeah. think you see something like that. You're, yeah. It's funny. You're, you're either waking up from sleep or you're doing something. You're like, who's that? You're like, I'm here alone. There's something <laughs> yeah. really bothering me right now. You know. But um, no. My question was gonna be um. I see you got cat behind you. Like I clearly see Captain America right. behind you. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I'm a big fan of myself. So is uh. So is Cabs. Um. But I was wondering. <laughs> And then, there it is. Check, check it out. I'll show it to you. I bought this for three bucks at Ollie's. Oh, what? what? It's it's got like all old school. No. Wow. Mostly Kirby stuff. Oh, but it's man. got all kinds. I was, we was talking like a couple of weeks about Kirby. The the props you should get, yeah. Jack Kirby. Yeah, he's That's awesome, man. He's the best. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. The question is funny because with the with the Rogers Black and the creative stuff. That Kaz is talking about is you mentioned the at you mentioned the Japanese the anime stuff and also but yeah. the movies in the comics that actually inspired uh the legends books that you have coming out that the legend books that you did the legend ones I wonder if anything oh, like yeah. that or the movies you said uh late 70s early 80s which I'm a big fan of that stuff myself you know certain um ninja movies and stuff like that I wonder if that kind of stuff inspired you for that legends book and possibly other stuff that you plan to do in the future that is that is along the lines of more i want to i want to see traditional comic book but you know like hero no hero base you know what i mean like yeah. it's like good guys bad guys you know it's like they're down the line middle you know what i mean yeah well i kind of s- stayed away from like traditional kind of like superhero stuff because you know, Marvel and DC's got a stranglehold on that. Seriously? And you know, a lot of people won't even look at your stuff. Because it's like, oh, that's not Batman. That's not for Marvel. That's not whatever. Yeah. It's like, okay, well then I'm not gonna waste my time with it then, you know? And I'm kind of like I guess I'm old and cynical, so having that mindset of like Aren't you we know, all you know <laughs> us that kind of uh, stuff like Captain America. I don't know if I could write Captain America. Um I would definitely love to try, <laughs> but um, so that's I think that's why the first stuff that I did was more like you know six A just a horror thing. Neotheric is like this crazy over the top, um, just wild, all kinds of crazy shit. Uh, it's pretty <laughs> much anything absurd that I can think of is in that book. Um, but I have, but yeah, like the that is something that. After I did Neotheric, I was like, I want to make something that's more all ages, that's more like a traditional kind of hero thing that I could share with my kids and other kids. And so that's one of the reasons why I did the Book of Legend. It's, you know, more like traditional superheroes. It's, uh, you know, like nine short stories. And the, the theme is basically like the hero's journey through different genres. So you got like, there's like a old pulp gangster story. There's like what? a Korean. Uh, let me see. Okay. Like, well, I'll just show you on the cover. Like this guy right here is kind of like a Sergeant Rock sort of from the Korean War, but there's a sci-fi yeah, element element to it. So he's yeah. like fighting aliens in a parallel dimension. Um, 
So like this girl here is like this ninja. So it's kind of like a 90s sort of story to it. Uh, this guy is kind of like a, a sci-fi, future kind of sci-fi, uh, like Blade Runner sort of thing. More and cyberpunk? Just, yeah, cyberpunk. Yeah, and, uh, and this guy is kind of like the classic superhero that's based on like Greek mythology, you know, like Superman, or Wonder Woman, all that kind of stuff. So that that is for that one. And then, yeah, like I was saying, I always wanted to do something that kind of like a love letter to the late seventies, early eighties, like Japanese sci-fi anime and stuff. And this, so that's what this is. And I've been working on this for like five years. Um, the, the, uh, I'll just show you this, the, like the design, this is something I was going to offer in the Kickstarter. This is on the backer board that will come with the, uh, with the book. Sick. So it's like in the bag and I print it right onto the, the backer board. And so this is showing like the different designs starting, you know, from the beginning. And this is the, the final version of the design. Um, so this is like extra thing that I was going to do. But his reminds design me of, uh, reminds me of Gray Fox from Metal Gear. Oh, yeah. Metal Gear Solid. Yeah. Sick. <laughs> yeah I love so, the fact that it's so called Gunny. Gunny. Yeah, that's a I great one. Yeah. Once uh, I hear Gunny, I think of Heartbreak yeah. Bridge with, um, with Clint Eastwood. Or Gunny Highway. Yeah. So it's like a little. Well, it's, it's dope. Yeah, one of the characters is kind of like a Clint Eastwood character, the sheriff that's in the story. Um, yeah, but that's his gun. And he, he calls himself Gun Engine Zero. And so the girl just says, hey, how about I call you Gunny? So that's that's where the name comes from. But um, so his design took like three years and about like five different artists before I finally got, well, finally got this design. Um, but yeah, so that book is... Definitely, I want to be for, I don't know if it necessarily be for little kids, but, you know, maybe like 10 years old and up kind of thing. Um, so it is something that I wanted to, I wanted to get into a try is to do something that could be like for a, a wider audience, a mainstream audience. And that's, that's definitely what I'm doing with that one. And I also do have a, a superhero story that I want to do maybe next year it is a traditional superhero i finally came up with an idea that i think would work really well unique story so I, these are i got tons of things i want to do but you know I, I can't keep like i was saying before i can't keep doing it sure. if i don't get the kind of some more support for it and Go to uh, that kickstarter right now and also uh, speaking yeah, of support please. i put the link to where you can get um neo thork and uh, six and eight on your Amazon page, I put your your website on there. So if anybody wants to go check out his comics, the, the link is oh, yeah. in the chat. You know, yeah, those do three so. books are all on Amazon right now, so you can get them if you'd rather get them on Amazon. Um, I had to put the price a little bit higher because Amazon takes so much out of your. Um, <laughs> sure, yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's like, yeah. like the Neo Therapy is it's like twenty dollars, and they take like seven dollars out of it. Jesus. So. It's ridiculous. And they won't even let you charge the actual amount for shipping. Like they have a set amount for shipping, like $3 or something. But it costs more than $3 to ship it. So you're losing money on everything you ship. So I'm like, wow. Damn it, Bezos. <laughs> Word. <laughs> Damn. Bozos. That's what I call them. Bozos. We, and, <laughs> and we have uh, Pro Wrestling Fiend says, here to support. Wish I could do stuff like that. Cool looking stuff. We have Amy that says Violet Evergarden was the most beautiful anime I've ever watched. If you watch it from an artist's point of view, wow. I will definitely keep that in mind, Amy. Thank you so much. And then we have Pro Wrestling Podcasting. We will help you out, Mike. Yes, go to that Kickstarter. I'll be hitting that Kickstarter as soon as I'm out of here. Love to see more stuff. Um, uh, So I know Cap had some more questions to ask. Go for it. Yeah. Um. All right. So the questions that he had about 6 and 8, you answered already? And uh, he was he wanted to ask about Neothoric, and um, he wanted to know what was the process like when he was writing that uh, that particular comic, and uh, also he noticed there was a uh, definite style change about halfway through issue number two. Is yeah. that something you can talk about, and what prompted the change? Yeah, well, basically, I got ghosted by the first artist. Okay, oh, so oh. I was like um, the harsh the harsh realities of the game. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, so I paid, I paid him, 
uh, he did like the initial character designs and everything, and I pitched it uh, as a, you know, I sent it as a pitch to like Image and all these people and stuff. So he did like the first four pages or something, and uh, and then so nobody, I never got a response from anybody. So I was like, well, screw it, let's just do it, and mm -hmm. I'll just pay you and I'll do it. And so I paid him, I paid him like half. So we were going to do four issues, and I already knew at the beginning, okay, we're going to do four issues, and at the end of the fourth issue, if I got money, I'm going to put it together as a graphic novel. So I paid him you know, 50% down to start the work, and then I would pay him the rest when he was finished. So he got to like page 16 of issue two, and then I never heard from him again. Damn. And uh, so I was like, you know, well, I've already got all this invested in it. I need to... I'm going to finish this. So I just, I had to find another artist to do it and hit um, the first artist, Dave, his name is Dave Mims. Uh, his style is extremely uh, unique. So it's pretty much impossible to find anybody that's going to do anything close to his. So I didn't even bother with that. I just like, I'm just be find somebody who's dependable, who's professional, who can get it done. And um, well, the other thing is that the first issue took like i think like a year for him to do and then the second issue was taking almost three years wow for him to do and he and like he never finished it so only got 16 pages and that was like i think it was two or three years uh so it was just becoming ridiculous so i was like okay well i'll just do it um so yeah obviously there's a definite art style change and it you know it's kind of jarring i know but there's nothing I can do about it. You know, it's just that it is what it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And so as far as the story goes, it's just basically <clears throat> when I thought about it, like after, after no publishers were interested in, I was like, I'm going to do this myself. And I figured, well, if I'm going to do it myself, I'm just going to, you know, do whatever the fuck I want. You know, I'm going to put like every kind of crazy shit. Seriously. In here. Yeah. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to edit it. I mean, I'll do some, you know, whatever. Uh, but if if I'm going to publish it and all that, then I'm just I'm just going to go for it. So the idea is that it's completely absurd, but I think that especially now the way things are, I think you see that life is pretty absurd. Yeah. So I think it's uh it's not too crazy as far as like ooh. You know, this this would never happen. Yeah, I speaks to the times. Yeah, not, so not for real. At all now. <laughs> so so yeah, I just put everything. It's gonna. It's the first four issues is basically like the first twenty four hours when these these uh, anthropomorphic evolved dinosaurs come back to modern day Earth, and it's all this havoc that happens when they come back, and these dinosaurs are are they act like fucking dinosaurs. Because they're dinosaurs. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, That's a good explanation. It's, uh, <laughs> it's like uh, I don't, I don't know if you ever heard the Chris Rock thing where he talked about uh, that guy Siegfried and Roy. Well, one of the tiger went tiger. tiger. Yeah, he said <laughs> yeah, he was in that tiger went crazy. He was like, no, the tiger went tiger. That's what yeah. they do. <laughs> For real. That, and so I was thinking about this. It's, like, it's these funny. Dinosaurs. We we have especially me and this guy Lair. Uh, uh, up yeah. there, we have quoted that line our yeah. entire <laughs> lives. Like, absolutely seriously. correct. And yeah. like, when anything goes like that, like, yo, um, no, that's that's the nature of that beast. That beast mm -hmm. is that's that's it. That's it. If the gorilla ripped off your face, that's what the gorilla does. Yeah, gorilla, yeah. so that's what it did. <laughs> yeah. oh, we love that saying, yeah, man. Yeah. So that was like my mindset was a story. Is like, how, you know, when, when you're writing is it, like. Okay, these these dinosaurs are just come savage motherfucking animals. They're just gonna do all kinds of crazy shit, and they don't care. And especially the the character who's like the T Rex, he's like uh, like an alpha male. You know, he just does fucking. I don't give a fuck. I just do what I do. Um, so that's kind of like what's guiding the story. Um, but also there is a thing about uh, sorry about that. There's just things about like family. Um, if you read the story, you'll see what is the impetus for them trying to return to Earth and to, uh, you know, live free. Um, it's all about family. Uh, there's also obviously the, the whole thing about personal freedom. You know, they're, 
what the story is is that the dinosaurs are slaves to these aliens that use them as like biological terraformers. So they go from planet to planet yeah. and they terraform the the planet so that other animals and life can prosper on the planet. And uh, so this when these dinosaurs evolve, then some of them says like, I don't, I don't fuck this shit. I want to be free. I want to live. I don't want to do this anymore. And so they, um, so they leave, they escape and they go back to earth because um, it's in a former home world. They were here before, but they don't know that it, you know, that life is, you know, really sprung up since they've been here. Um, and that kind of thing we'll get into in the future issues about all of the, more of the backstory about how, how everything came about. Um, but like I said, like these first four issues is just like the first 24 hours when they come back and they have they fight with the National Guard um, then the, the aliens like try to get them back. And they have this uh, this cosmic serpent that comes down and tries to uh, get them. So and the aliens work for a guy who's I'm not saying right now is is God or if it's a God or the God. But it's a guy who's like, this is how the universe is. These dinosaurs are supposed to be doing this and this. You know, there's like a very set plan for everything. And so when the dinosaurs escape, they violate all of these plans. So he's like, you have to fix this. And that's kind of like what the, the story is, is about. It's like your self-determination. It's like it's not for somebody else to decide what my life, what my destiny should be. I should be in control of that. And so that's kind of like what the dinosaurs represent. Sick. Yeah, that yeah. sounds good. Yeah, that actually sounds very fun. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Cap in the in the chat goes, um, I don't want to talk bad about the guy, but it was for the best. The second artist was awesome. And uh, oh, Amy, yeah. Amy was saying that, uh, why does this story sound like reality? Well, listen up. He said yeah, it. Things are crazy yeah. nowadays. I'm he waiting said for it. some dinosaurs to come and fucking uh, dinosaur the shit out of us. Uh, I, live in, I, live in, I live in Florida, sir. I the dinosaurs are here. <laughs> They're here. I see them all well, the time. Well, look at this cap. You don't have to. You don't have to speak ill of the other comic book. I'll say, yo, you can go fuck yourself, son. That's dirt shit you did. Talking from hood status. Yeah. Uh, we call that shit. That's some dirt bag shit, brother. Where? Yeah. Cat, Cappy, I said it, you know, and yeah. I don't plan on drawing anytime soon or going on comics, so we're good. You're not burning bridges. You, no, no, I'm not burning any bridges. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I'm doing is I'm incinerating whatever could develop. Yeah, well, yeah, just like you, just like your guy from the boys. Uh, we'll cross that bridge when we burn it. My my man, the butcher. Will be, exactly. Love right. um, you know that dude. Uh, Cap also said, uh, "Yeah, when that cosmic serpent came and showed up, I was like, oh shit, they in trouble now.'" <laughs> yeah, I, I was just trying to like. There's all kinds of stuff, and like this is if we can keep going with this uh, series because I've talked to one of the other artists that I've worked with recently about it, and he's excited to jump on it. So if we That's can important. do it. Um, if we can do it, I'm thinking about trying to run a Kickstarter for that issue five uh, this summer. And um, the, the whole story will get even crazier. And like I said, this is just the beginning. This is just the start. It's going to ramp up, you know, to like crazy, way crazier than you can even imagine. Because I'm like, I want to put like, I don't want anybody to think that or, or like figure out what's going to happen next. It's like I put stuff in there because I don't even know what's going to happen next. So that when you read it, you're like, holy shit, what the hell's going to happen? And then when it happens, you're like, oh, I, I would never thought because the way this story ends, I don't want to spoil it. But there's like a major cliffhanger. And um, I'm, I was 90 99 percent sure that no one will be able to figure out how it's going to turn out. So. But, you know, I'm trying to put stuff like that into just craziest stuff that you can think of. Shit, I hear you. That's definitely a way to keep the, the readers interested in the next chapter. Yeah. Is there like a, is there like a, like a dream project or maybe like a dream collaboration 
something that you would like to do, maybe work with a famous artist or, or writer. I might not know these artists and or writers, but you know, would you, do you have anything like that that would be like, all right, I'm here. I made it dream goal. Yeah. Well, as far as comic books go, um, like I love, um, art Adams. I mean, mm -hmm. his art is just amazing. If I had art Adams, you know, working on a book with him, that would be incredible. Uh, you know, like the big, these big artists that I grew up with. Uh, I know JRJR is kind of mm -hmm. sort of gone downhill recently, but when I was, you know, young and he was on uh, X Men, I mean, he was the shit. I loved his stuff. Um, who else? I mean, Ryan Otley even is one, like a, a kind of newer guy that I think is just an amazing artist. So there's definitely artists that I would love to be able to work with for sure, like them. Um, Todd McFarlane, of course, of that course. would be incredible. Uh, and characters, like if, if I could get a chance to work do a Captain America, I have some ideas for Captain America stories. I would love that opportunity, you know, just to say like I, I had like one story in the whole mythos of, you know, um, Jack Kirby and Joe Simon's creation. You know, it's there for all eternity. Uh, you know, Captain America, G.I. Joe. I mean, I love G.I. Joe. I grew yes. up with G.I. Joe. Yes. Um, yes. I would love to I would love to be able to do like my own kind of take on it, starting from scratch. Um, even if it was like a movie or something. Uh things like that. Uh if I could get do a movie, uh I would love to do a Robotech movie. Um, because I just I love that series that that cartoon just like changed my life like opened my eyes to so much stuff um things like that you know it's like certain properties and characters that I, I would love to be able to do uh but you know what i what i'm doing now is like like some of these characters are versions of are sort of like versions like this you know this guy here i mean he started off as basically my idea for a reboot of rom mm -hmm. that i was going to try to pitch to marvel and mm. so i thought if i because i had heard you know guys know mark millar he's um you know the writer who did like uh wanted uh, kick ass all those oh, kind of stuff yeah. um and jupiter's legacy all that kind of thing uh i had read he like when he was trying to break in at marvel what he did is he just took like these um you know d level c level marvel characters that they weren't using and said he came up with ideas for stories with them he figured that if if he came up with the story and pitched it to marvel for a character they weren't using they would be more receptive to let him you know kind of write a story and stuff mm -hmm. so i thought of the same thing it's like well what characters like that are not real active right now could i do story for and one was rom the other was like uh coke and dagger if you remember those the, the guy and the girl and the other was the the uh, team america i don't know if you guys remember there was a old comic where they were like brothers that rode motorcycles Whoa. and it was called team america and then i think later they changed it to the marauders or something okay, okay the marauders i remember that yeah, yeah. that, 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 that sounds good yeah, yeah. I was wondering so who's, I who's your favorite. Of, I'm sorry, you were saying? No, let's go ahead. No, I was wondering who your favorite G.I. Joe character was. Storm Shadow. Oh, right there, bro. It's usually Snake doing. Eyes. Usually Snake Eyes. Yeah, I'm, uh, I guess I'm like a contrarian. You know, it's like the one character that everybody's supposed to like. It's like, I hate that guy. I, you know, let me give me somebody else. Who is that character in G.I. Joe? Because I might be the opposite. I'm a beachhead guy. I oh, yeah, I like Beachhead, too. too. I like okay. Beachhead guy, too, yeah. And that guy is, honestly, it's either Snake. It's always been Snake Eyes or Duke. It's either Snake I don't like Duke Everybody either. loves Snake Eyes or everybody loves Duke. And if you're a wrestling fan, automatically Sergeant Slaughter. Yep, that's mine. That's the way it works. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I was always, like, I like Snake Eyes, and I'm a fan of Storm Shadow, but for some reason, Beachhead, I don't know. I don't know what it was. <laughs> I guess because he's a drill instructor. And it's yeah, geared. I think that's I think that's a beachhead right there. Yeah, I don't know if that's beachhead or firefly. That's beachhead. That's beachhead. Yeah. Yeah. I had a yeah, little. These are my three a, favorite right here. I had an action. I had a little oh, GI Joe. 
had a little G.I. Joe beach head, man. I don't know where he is now. Mm-hmm. It's kind of sad, but <laughs> it was like my favorite little toy. It was like a good luck charm thing. And <laughs> life hasn't been the same since I lost that toy. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> there was the some beach. lucky qualities to the, yeah, life's a beach for sure. Mm-hmm. I, I'm always a fan of Cobra Commander too because he was the the absolute first cowardly leader I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he was he like so I was well, like, man. how are you people following this dude? He quits every day. Yeah. Well, he's much you, better in the comic than in the cartoon. I yeah, didn't no, like yeah. the way he was in the cartoon. In the comic, he was much more believable. Uh, and Sir, I mean, I just like I like his look, you know, mm-hmm. kind of like cool shit, you know, snake and all that kind of crap. I, I got like it. got like four different versions of Smith, uh, Storm Shadow up there, and uh, can't see him, but he's all the way up at the top. And there's one that's like a Hong Kong company makes. It's like a 12 inch, mm-hmm. and it's super articulated. It's got all this kind. Of, it's like 150 bucks. It's like, man, I want that, but I can't. I can't justify that. <laughs> yeah, m- m- models are like. I wish I could just get oh, yeah. every model that I see, but. Man, some of those things are pricey, man. I like a a lot of like the Resident Evil models. Uh, yo, them just could run like there's like a there's like a Leon Kennedy with like a motorcycle. It's just like almost eight hundred bucks. Oh, that yeah. is crazy. They're, yeah, they're, they're pretty. There's, there's a there's a punish one where the guy's on a pinball machine after he kills him, and it's like they have it as a, just like a plain figure and it's like twenty bucks. But then they have a, a bigger one that's very very detailed. That's four hundred and fifty bucks. I'm like, yeah, that's crazy, dude. If I if I had the money, I didn't have a room like that. But just to get that for that, I'm like, can I be part of the movie at that point? I'm a huge, <laughs> I'm a huge, I'm a huge Final Fantasy. Uh, I'm a huge Final Fantasy fan. Uh, Final Fantasy Seven in particular. Um, I like eight. I like nine. But there's a there's a sculpture. It's like it's it's big. It's I want to say, uh, yeah, I would say it's twelve maybe, but um, it's Sephiroth with the with the wing, the one wing. It's just like almost fifteen hundred bucks. I'm like, dude, why is it so expensive? Yeah. But I would I would love something like that. Yeah. Well, yeah, I've seen the uh, uh, yeah, Macross, you know, Macross Robotech. Yeah, There's some company I think it's called Kits Concepts. They have like a cockpit. It's just the cockpit of the the Valkyrie, uh-huh. and but inside they have LEDs for. So it, everything lights up and the panels and everything, the cockpit, the top of the canopy comes off and all this. I think it's like $2,500 or something. Jeez. I mean, it's insane. I would love, if I was a millionaire, I'd get it. Of course. But, but it's just ridiculous. Right. Uh, Amy has a question in the chat. Um, she wanted to know if, you, if she can get your comics in like a PDF form or like online because uh, trying to get stuff shipped to South Africa is next to impossible. Their, yeah. their postage system sucks for a world third, third world, yeah. third world country. Yeah, every time when I do a Kickstarter or something, I have a PDF versions Sweet. that are available to people. So if she wants to do the Kickstarter later, the Kickstarter will have you know this book. Obviously, I'm doing that for this book, but all of these other books will also be available. So, so people can get those books as well, either physical copies or PDFs. Um, so yeah, the whole international shipping thing is ridiculous. Even just like to Canada or something, yeah, it's like twenty five bucks or whatever. Um, so yeah, I will have PDFs of all of the books available. Sweet. Okay. Sweet. And Sweet. Uh, Pro Wrestling Fiend wants to know: um, Have you ever considered doing a YouTube channel, maybe like a narrative comic book, kind of like a voiceover? You ever thought about doing that? Well, I do. Uh, I do have a YouTube channel. Uh, I, I haven't done a lot of stuff with the comic books recently. Uh, I was, I started it to kind of do like a nuts and bolts sort of like making comics thing where I talk sure. about, you know, like writing, like how to the do process. like out. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I've done a couple videos on that, but you know, I'm trying to make the comics takes up so much time. It's hard to do also do a YouTube channel and always constantly have videos. Yeah. Uh, I do do an. I did start another thing, where uh, it's about novels, where I read like the first four pages of a novel, um, just to get like, because um, in like creative writing they always say like, you got to have a real strong opening. The first fifteen. Yeah. yeah. 
and some I've heard some people say like like agents and producers and stuff they they only read the first page mm -hmm. and if the first page doesn't grab them they'll just toss it. So when I was thinking about that, I was like, well, what I can do, I just get some books from the library. I'll read the first four pages and just as a way to kind of like, you know, talk about this kind of thing where, you know, it's a creative writing thing where, you you know, you think about like what doesn't work or what works and trying to grab people right off the bat. Um, so I just started doing that. Uh, but yeah, I am mean, it's like with two kids uh, trying to put all these books together and stuff. Uh, I don't have a ton of free time, so sure. I, there's not so much other stuff that I can do. And I, I want to focus on actually making the books and getting them out. So if I could, uh, you know, if, the, if I got enough support, I could do, I could probably put out, you know, like five or six books every year, it, you know, because I got so much stuff that I want to do that I'm writing right now so that it'll be ready later. Yeah. So, you know, I've kind of got like a pipeline set up where I've got this project and then that one right after and that one after, after, after. So it's kind of like a yeah. music producer. They've been making beats yeah. forever. Yeah. You get that one beat. Now everybody wants to hear your catalog. Well, it's like, motherfucker, that's what I was trying to sell you before. <laughs> and now that I'm here. So that's actually a good segue uh, uh, about another question that I have in terms of the writing. So you said that your first comic that you wrote and introduced and tried to ship out to someone was at 11 years old. So, yeah. you know, was writing something that uh, always came natural to you? Or are you kind of like a self-taught writer or did you go to school, maybe take some classes? Yeah, um, I didn't take, I, I'm pretty much self-taught in everything. Awesome. It's like, uh, That's what's up. Yeah, like, because back in the old days, I had a, I found my mom had a typewriter it was in the closet. I took it out and just started, you know, like banging away. I taught myself how to type. Sweet. Um, you know, and that's in the old days where, like, if you made a mistake on a page, you had to rewrite the whole goddamn page. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or, or even on, on typewriters, I remember there was this like little, like, it's like a little strip, almost like like a band aid. You'd put it over what you wanted to delete. Yeah. Then you you have to rewrite the mistake that you made yeah. so that it can delete it. That's so crazy. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I I think I still have somewhere in the closet. I mean, like stacks and stacks of papers and stuff that I was writing when I was a little kid. It's just like trying to come up with my own stories. And, you know, when I look at them now, I mean, obviously they're, they're complete shit, but, you know, embarrassing, cringy kind of stuff. But <laughs> at the time I was like, oh, this is so awesome. Look at this character. It's so great. You know, they're like, this is amazing. It's an epic, you know, everybody would love this, you know, and I was like, uh, yeah, I don't think so. But it, it's definitely like, you know, what is the saying? Like you, you can't become an expert in something until you spend like ten thousand hours doing it or something yeah. like that. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. So it's definitely you just got to put the time into it, and you know, I, yeah. I don't know. I just for whatever reason I thought that this is something that I really could do, that I could do it well, and then I really wanted to do it. Um, there's lots of things that I like doing, you know, like I, I like working on bikes and stuff and, you know, rebuilding engines and all that kind of thing. Um, there's all kinds of things I like, but this, for one thing is like, I love doing it. The other thing is I'm, I'm hoping that maybe it can be something that create, that creates kind of like a legacy, um, uh, that maybe can provide for my children when I'm gone. Sure. Um, because this is another thing that when I started writing in China is I didn't, I was having a lot of health problems and I kind of seriously thought that I might not be around for much longer. Damn. So I was thinking about, well, maybe if I could do something and then it could catch fire or whatever, it could provide for my family when I'm not here. Um, so these are kind of things that kind of think in long term. It's not just like, um, you know, hey, I got an idea for a comic book. Let me make one comic book. There's a long-term plan. There's a lot of things that I have set up that I want to do. And you know, I'm thinking some of these things are like five years ahead of time. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, it's just uh, – so there's a lot of reasons why I, I like doing this and I want to be able to keep doing it and – uh, I want to be like a, 
my own man, you know, to be able to, you know, not have to always work for somebody else or live under somebody else's, you know, you got to be at this place at this time and do this and sit there and do this and wear a mask and do that and do all this crap because I tell you to, you know, it's like, uh, screw you, Uh, you know, just like the the dinosaurs and the thing, you know, that's (laughs) kind of where it comes from is my own attitude. It's like, I just want to be free. I want to be my own person and be able to, you know, determine my own life. Well, yeah. Best of luck and glad that you are uh, doing better now, man. That's yeah. 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 Uh, now, uh, you, go ahead. I, I, I've been asking a lot of questions. No, I'm no. Sorry. I wanted to read, um, Amy made a comment saying, um, just to tell you a story, she knows a cartoonist in South Africa that started off doing cartoons in the political space. And now he's fully independent by his supporters. So you got this. She wanted to show some support to you, Mike. Nice, nice, yeah. nice. Yeah, there's well, definitely, you can see examples of that. You know, people, just, I mean, even just like on YouTube channels, people starting a YouTube channel and then it just blows up and then they're able to have their own life just from that. Some of, yeah. some of my favorite stories like that are like, you know, this happens a lot in video games where video games are like, made unfinished or or broken or you know you have this modding community these people you know they take their pcs and they take these games and make like their own games and then the developers producers writers directors they see this stuff they're like hey man you, you want to come on board I and mean, just get jobs like that i think it's cool but one, one, one quick question from me so again you know you, you you've mentioned a few times that you've written a lot of stuff and, and you have a lot what's what's your baby What's what's the thing that like you're protecting with with everything you got? What's what's the thing? Uh, my kids. <laughs> <laughs> of course, yeah. I also have a child, so I get that. But yeah. in terms of your like uh your your comics and stuff. Well, that's that's hard. That's that would be like ask me to pick my favorite kid. Uh, that's exactly what I'm telling um... you to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because everything has, you know, each of these stories is almost like it's a piece of sure. me. So there's different, you know, reasons why it's special to me. And um, maybe if I had to pick, I would say maybe like Neotheric is kind of cool. like overall kind of represents me. Yeah. Like a, a lot of the ideas that I think are kind of important. And they're not on the surface of the story. It's not like trying to cram it down your throat or whatever. It's, you know, it's underneath. Um, but, uh, yeah, I guess if I had to pick, like, one that that was, like, most representative that I thought was, like, yeah, this is the one that I really want to succeed the most. Yeah. Uh, even if I don't – I know that it's not something that a lot of people would – you know, um, like, because it's very, you know, it's kind of a niche sort of uh, a story. There's, you know, there's a lot of violence. There's some bad language. Uh, Oh, we like that here. We love that over here. Just, 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 yeah, you just described me and Lay. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so, but, uh, so there's there's definitely an audience for it mm-hmm. but uh, uh i don't i don't think it's a wide audience um but something like the gun engine zero i think for sure it's like it it could maybe be way more popular i don't know um but i mean i still love that story too there's still a lot of stuff in that story that comes from my own personal life experience even though you know it's a, like a sci-fi adventure kind of thing there's a lot of stuff. Every story I write, you know, there's a lot of little things from my own life that I try to put into a story to make it more real. Mm-hmm. Even if it's, you know, like this crazy adventure that, you know, you, the characters still have to feel like real people, even if they're not people, you know, yeah. they have to have like real motivations and things that like their, you know, reasons for doing what they're doing and things that they like, things that they hate, things they're afraid of. Uh, all that kind of stuff. And so I always put like a little bit of that in everything. But uh, yeah, I think it would definitely be Neil Theric because uh, if I was, if I could come back as anything, it would be a Tyrannosaur Rex. <laughs> <laughs> the original yeah. king. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <Look at that. laughs> 
Now, like, you know, I guess, you know, and I'll let you know, we usually go on for like three hours. So if you got stuff to do, shit to write, you know, you let us know. But, um, mm-hmm. you know, talk a little bit more about like, you know, all of this new stuff in terms of comics. You know, we have the MCU, DCU, you know, are you an MCU guy, DCU guy? Who's your guy? Who's your movie? What do you think of all of these TV shows? You know, do yeah. you have anything to say about that? Well, it's funny because, you know, growing up with comic books, being such a huge fan of like, comic books was such a huge part of my life. It was we, me and my brother, we would sit around just imagining like one day if they make a movie of the oh, X-Men yeah. or something like that. It would be so awesome. And then now you finally have it. It's, it's become reality. Uh, and now we're seeing all of these, you know, superheroes and stuff and, and movies. And, but, you know, they're not always good. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, that's why I'm asking. Yeah, like any of them stick out, or you can be honest. Uh, if you hate that shit, let us know. Please. Yeah, yeah. Well, please. the problem, the problem, because we we just saw. I took family. We saw the new Spider-Man movie just a couple weeks ago. Oh, here we go. I Isn't thought it was, I thought it was pretty good. I mean, there were some moments in it that I really thought, you know, just knocked it out of the park. There was like the moment, you know, when Andrew Garfield, you know, he saves. Uh, um, MJ? MJ? Yes. Well, yeah, MJ. I was like, I I knew it was coming. You see, it's coming. But did they actually let that moment breathe, you know, for him to react? You know, I felt that. Yes. I was yeah. like, oh, wow, well, that that is a that was nice. Mm-hmm. Uh there are some things that I, you know, it's like the problem with a lot of these Marvel movies is like they're all, they're so similar. It's always the same kind of basic the formula, story. Bro. Yeah. And this is why I really liked WandaVision. I thought yeah. that was excellent. Here um, we go. I mean, I'm a big fan of uh, David Lynch. And uh, I don't know if you guys know David Lynch did Twin Peaks and all kinds yeah. of work. Yeah. He's kind of a weird guy. He does little, you know, stuff that's uh, a little off. But uh, I like that, especially Twin Peaks. Twin Peaks was just amazing to me. I mean, like the first, when when I saw it the very first time, that first episode, dude, that kind of thing, you know, like it hits you and it stays with you forever. Uh, and WandaVision to me felt a lot like a David Lynch kind of a story. Um, at the end, it went back to kind of the Marvel kind of just big explosion sure. thing. Yeah. Uh, it would have been. I like the moment with the two visions, and they're just talking. Yes, I yeah. thought that was really yes. good. Absolutely. And uh, and you know, if you're doing a TV show, then you can explore these kind of things and do things a little bit differently. You don't have to have just big explosions or somebody's always trying to destroy the world and all this kind of crap. Um, and but um, that's also with the comics. I mean, that's one reason why I got out of the comics is because everything is a fucking event. Yeah. It's like, why does it need to be an event? It's like one after the other, literally. It's like the world's going to die. The universe is going to die. All this kind of shit. It's like, well, what about just personal stories where these, you know, where each, where you get to see these people, these characters, like what motivates them, all this kind of stuff. And we say, we say, I say it all the time. Marvel yeah. is at its best when it's just people kicking it. I say yeah. it all the time. The ground level yeah. stuff, yeah. Ground level. Yeah. I, that's why I'm a massive Punisher fan. Is like for the Punisher, yeah. not every day the world's gonna explode. Yes. Yeah. He's just gonna do what he does. You know what I mean? On a street level, and it's gonna happen. Tomorrow's gonna come, but not after a bunch of people die, and he makes sure he everybody that needs to die dies. But he's gonna wake up tomorrow, rinse, repeat. But it happens. Like his world doesn't end if he doesn't kill that one guy. Yeah. I'll catch you later. Yeah, and I can understand where you come from. You know what I mean? I completely, perfectly understand. Like, yo, I want to know about the, the 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 individual. Like, I tell these guys, I want to know about not necessarily their superpower or this. I want to know about their skill. What is the skill they actually have that's not their superpower? Whether it's intelligence, detective skills, um, uh, physical attributes, martial arts, whatever. I want to see that more than anything else in a character. And I'm completely with you on that. And it's funny because you say David Lynch, I think of like Tim Burton, yeah. where he doesn't fit the medium. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I watched One Peaks and I was at first I was like, weird. But then I started to get it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like when I was younger, I used to love the Hitchhiker and Tales of the Crypt, especially the Hitchhiker. Because I'm like, 
how cool is that? Even though I realized now nah, he was just homeless. <laughs> like, you know, cool. <laughs> getting all these stories and then telling them somewhere else so i can completely i know where, i know where you're coming from mike man i completely get it yeah i get it. yeah and i think kind of like when i the if i had to sort of like break down what i write mm-hmm. is i think it's everything i do is kind of comes from like a blue collar sort of perspective so even if like just for example i have an idea for a star wars story and in my story, it's about a crew, uh, like an ad crew, and they're just in some far off location, whatever. And the story is just about those guys on the crew. And so it's not this big epic thing. It's like you're taking the big epic thing and you're bringing it down to the personal level and how it affects the characters. And so that's kind of like everything I do it's like that. So like the Neotheric with the dinosaurs, it's a big story because, you know, they're, you know, it's spans the whole cosmos. You got, you know, cosmic beings, you got a, a God and all this kind of stuff. But really it's just about the characters and like their interpersonal relationships and how they struggle from like day to day just to live. And um, also like the, this gun engine zero story, it's a big sci-fi thing where you got like these two warring um, alien species creatures, but what it's gonna come down to is the the personal relationship between this girl that meets the the main character, how sh- they kind of affect each other, and you know how things play out that way. Uh, I don't want to spoil everything because obviously it's uh, a big thing, but that's kind of when I look at my own stuff and think about like, what am I doing? What am I writing? Why do I, why do I write stories like this? I mean, it comes from that. Just, just trying to be like telling stories from like a, you know, a simple everyday, you know, blue collar sort of perspective. Funny as you say that, I think you would probably be great at writing. Uh, Cause I spoke about the fact that we're supposed to do damage control for Marvel. Yeah. You know? And damage control is literally about a bunch of people that just clean up after all the crap that happens. Yeah. Like, there's a war here. We clean up after it. I think yeah. that's probably the, the exact same kind of thing you were going f- you're going for with that uh with the crew in Star Wars. Yeah. It's essentially everyday people that have to pick up the shit after these people. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. I would love to watch something like that. Yeah. Yeah. That would be dope. Yo, uh, Mike, I got a uh, a few questions. I'm getting hit from all yeah. angles here. Uh the all first right. one. Kenny hits me up and he wanted to ask questions like, um, what was the biggest thing that you had to adjust to when you was living in Japan? China. Uh, it was China. He fucking wrote Japan. Yeah. In China. Sorry. I wish That's it was cool. Japan. That's where I wanted to go. Because <laughs> my dad was in the army. He's okay. a Vietnam vet. And I, and, uh, when, nice when I was best. growing up, when I was growing up, he, um, he used to watch all the Kung Fu movies and stuff like Bruce Lee and everything. Yeah. So I grew up with that and, uh, you know, watching these movies and stuff, I was really into, I became really into uh, Eastern culture and just everything. And then later when I got into high school, got into like uh, anime and manga and stuff like that. So I really wanted to go to Japan and I was working on motorcycles and I liked the sport bikes, you know, like Kawasaki, Honda, all that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah. I don't work on Hondas, you know, I mean, Harleys. The, I work on the Japanese stuff. So that was my goal was to actually go to Japan, but it didn't work out that way. Uh, and I found a job working in China. And so it was, uh, it's almost like being in another world. It's, it's pretty crazy. Um, there, what time were you there from? What was the, the, the uh, time I left, I left in August of 2008 and okay. we, we moved back in, October of 2015. Oh, so okay. it's like seven years. And uh, I had every intention when I left to stay there forever. Um, I got rid of everything that I had. And I was just, I didn't plan on ever coming back. But, you know, uh, plans don't always work out. Sure. So <laughs> um, it was it was definitely experience. I mean, there's so much things. Uh, we, we could be here for like 50 hours talking about everything. But uh, 
man, it's uh, it's almost like the Wild West, if you can imagine, like what the Wild West was in America, and at the time that I was there, it's like, because they think like China is like this communist country, and I don't know, some yeah. people think I guess that soldiers or whatever walking on the streets with guns and keeping everybody under control and everything. But it's not like that at all. It was like totally free. There was so it was much more free than America. It's like, you know, because if you want to rent an apartment or something here in the states, you know, you got to have a credit score. They got to do the background check. You got to have all this kind of stuff. Uh, but in in China, it's like you got the money. Here you go. There's your apartment. <laughs> That's it. And uh, it was like one time I was uh, I w- I rented a whole house. It was three floors, five bedrooms, all by myself. It cost me like two hundred bucks a month. Wow. Shit. And, <laughs> we moving to China, was, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you know now. Yeah. The things, the things are a lot different now. Yeah. They got this uh, social credit score thing, which is they didn't have when I was there, and I think it's kind of it's gotten pretty bad now. But um, at the time, I mean, and it depends on where you live, like. At that time, I was living where the racetrack was. It's in a little city called Zhuhai. It's just across the bay from Hong Kong. So it's a real small city. I lived in a village that was right outside of the racetrack. And uh, so, you know, there's nobody. You just do whatever the fuck you want to do. Nobody's there doing anything. There's no police or anything. Uh, But if you go to Beijing, Shanghai, then uh, things are going to be much more strict. Like in Beijing, uh, you can't have a car unless you um, were born there and you can get the license plate because um, there's so many people that want to come to live in Beijing. Uh, it's way too overcrowded. So the Cuba. way they tried to control it is oh, – my dad's Cuban too, by the way. Yeah. Uh, but they uh, they try to control it by like limiting the license plates. And to get a license plate, so you have to have been born in Beijing and you have to have like this household. Um, it's a lot of like a passport. It shows that you were born there, your family's there. Oh, and need that for then, New York. <laughs> <laughs> on top of that, <laughs> then you got to pay like 250,000 RMB, which is uh, like maybe 40,000 US dollars or something to get a license plate for your car. Jesus. That sounds like you're getting a taxi uh, license over here. Yeah. We're getting it's, bikes. We're getting yeah. bikes. <laughs> For real. No yeah. wonder everybody in China is so skinny. They all got to ride bikes. Legs. Word. Yeah, so, but, yeah there's, a, there's a lot of things. I mean, you know, the, uh, all I can say is like when, when I first got there, I was single. I hadn't met my wife yet. And it was like a nonstop bachelor party. We would just. <laughs> I, I would we would, I would work during the day at the track, then we'd go out like some of the guys that we worked with and so whoever like we would just meet people at the clubs and stuff. We would go to KTVs and clubs and everything, and we'd be out until like two three o'clock in the morning. Then I'd have to go back and get up at six o'clock in the morning and go back to the racetrack. And they just kept doing that. It was like every day, and I would travel to different cities because they would do like um, stunt bike shows and different cities around China. So we did that too. So uh, it was real fun yeah, <laughs> when I first got there. But uh, it was kind of crazy. And uh, I kind of got wore down by it a little bit. But um, yeah. eventually I met my wife and then kind of uh, settled things down and changed my focus a little bit. Um, but it's uh, – and the food is not like the Chinese food you get here. Oh, the Chinese up. food here – it's not real Chinese food. So you're not really going to find any of that stuff over there. Um, so it's different. Uh, what they eat in the back of the Chinese restaurant is real Chinese food. What yeah. they don't serve us. Yeah, exactly. So we, we staying in New York, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I told my wife. I was like, you just, you look, when you go to like, if you go to America, you go to a Chinese restaurant, a buffet, whatever, and then you look and see what the people that work there, mm-hmm. what yeah. they eat they bring out they got their own little thing and they bring out it's not the food that they serve you oh. it's completely different so yeah it's not real chinese food but um yeah I, I mean i can say that most of the people that i met in china were super nice to me i mean like incredibly nice like they would invite you to their house 
um, people you meet at the club or whatever would just all night buy you drinks and stuff. Most people were like super nice. There were some people that would, you know, give you the stink eye and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I, I never had a problem with, you know, really anybody. Um, so it was definitely, um, it was definitely a, a good time. And I would probably have stayed there if it wasn't for my daughter um, and her education and everything. Sure. Edu education system over there is horrible. Even my wife will tell you that it's really bad. Um, so we decided to come back to the States and that's why we're here. Cool. I hear you. Uh, uh, all right. A few more questions. Uh, Cap wrote down, he goes, um, how cool is it that your passion projects are actually being made and sold, you know, and people they have the, the opportunity to buy them or what? Great question. Well, yeah. I mean, that's, that's what it's all about. It's like, you know, if I write something, it just sits on the shelf back there. It don't mean shit. I um, mean, it's all about, you know, people reading it and then hearing what their reaction is. I mean, that's the big thing. It's like, like I was saying before, I, I had gotten out of comics and I had gotten into uh, film and video and stuff. And there was one time in particular where we made this like short film and it was at the Fort Lauderdale, Fort Lauderdale Film Festival where they showed it and it won first place in this little contest. With Sweet. Thing. And uh, we were in a theater. It wasn't a normal movie theater. This was like a huge, um, like stage theater, and mm -hmm. so there was probably like a thousand people in there. And when they showed our little short film, and hearing like people laugh when the jokes came up and all that kind of stuff, it was just amazing. It's like a drug, you know. Your whole body just starts tingling. It's like, yeah, I mean, that's what it's all about. That's why I did this. Is it's not about me or anything else. It's just it's about that experience sharing that with other people and then hopefully you know they'll appreciate it or you know they'll understand it or they'll take something from it if, even if they don't necessarily like it um if they they understand kind of like what you're trying to do or so, whatever they can appreciate it then yeah that's that's awesome i mean that's really all it is about it's, i would love to get feedback from people to say, you know, tell me like what they liked. And when I've gone on other podcasts and people like tell me like, oh, I love Neil Therick. That was awesome. But, you know, you know, it's like, yes, that's amazing. I love that. Yeah. That's Who cares dope. what I think? Who cares what you guys think? Yeah. Uh, show, show is in the chat and he wants to know, have you ever incorporated your kids in your comics? Uh, yeah. Well, sort of. In six eight, the little the girl's name is Matilda. That's my daughter's name. Okay. Nice. Um, the nice. character's wife is I mean no the detective in the story is named uh, Vivian Chen. That's my wife's name. Nice. Uh, that's her uh, English name that she chose yeah. is Vivian. Uh, so I I put them in that story. Uh, in this Gun Engine Zero story, there's going to be a little kid, a little boy. His name is uh, Kez. That's like my son's name is Marquez. Okay. And my, my daughter calls him Kez. So it's his little nickname. So I put him in there. Uh, and just to show you this, uh, my daughter's made her own Benny comic. Yes. Nice. Really so, yes. So this will be, this will, uh, I've been doing these with, uh, for the last couple of Kickstarters. This is the this is the first book. I got the other book there too, and she's working on the third book right now. And nice. so they're just like twelve page. That's so uh, good. Oh my god, that's so comic. good. So, so she got into that. I helped her, and she she wrote it and she drew it, and then we scan it in, and then I and um, help her do the colors and letters and everything, and then we print it uh, at home. And. Uh, so I'll be uh, offering that too on the Kickstarter, and also I don't know if you see this shirt. This is uh, it says comic books for kids. It's kind of worn out. I've had this for a while, but this is a charity that gives comic books to and other stuff like Funkos and all this kind of stuff to kids that are in hospitals. Some of them have terminal illnesses, and um, what I've been doing is like when somebody buys one of the books, we send one of the book to the charity so i match it one for one okay. um 
and I talked. There's a there's a guy on Facebook, Russell, um, and I I talked to him about it, and uh, he told me his son has like a heart surgery, and he was telling everybody about like how what a big difference it made when like when he was with his son and like all the pain he was in in the hospital, but just having like a comic book or something took his mind off of all of that. Yeah, and yeah. Um, so once I found out about that, I wanted to help out. And that's what I've been doing is just for my daughter's comic. And like whenever people will buy like uh, the, the book or the set, I'll match it and send one to the charity too. But my kids are, have, finally gotten into comic books <laughs> after, <laughs> after pushing them for a couple of years <laughs> finally got into it and my daughter's making her own comic book so. that's dope that's great dope. call that's great cool. calls too and great awesome. question yeah, shows yeah. real nice question yeah. that's yeah. awesome man oh yeah yeah i remember in the in the fourth grade we had like a class project and my friend and i ed we decided to do a comic book banana man and we won like the contest we were so excited we kept trying to do it like just to mess around but no we we quickly figured out that that was difficult to do and you know we were what eight uh nine ten maybe eleven this guy's over here at 11 years old here you go marvel <laughs> just, you know we're over here like what do we do <laughs> Yeah, if I can. It's all right. Marvel just threw it back and said, "Here you go. I don't want this." <laughs> still, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you, you had to, you had the brass to say yeah, that, right? Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, that's not an easy. That's you don't for you real. build up to that kind of courage, man. The only time I ever contacted a company about something, they fired the dude I talked about, and that was I, I contacted <laughs> WWE about Shelton Benjamin, and they fired him. So oh, that's why, yeah, that's why I don't contact people. No yeah. more. I praised yeah. them, and they said, "Get him out of here." I was like, "Fuck." But yo, Mike, I got a hard hitting question for you now. All right, hit me. Growing up, DC or Marvel? Uh, definitely Marvel. Uh, I get, to, yeah. to me, I don't know why, but to me, like when I was growing up, DC seemed like very kiddish, you know, like little kids. And you know, even though I was a little kid, I didn't want to be a little kid. I would yeah. think of myself as like, so you know, like. Well, obviously, like I said before, my dad was in the army, so GI Joe was the biggest thing. Uh, I loved GI Joe, and just to me, GI Joe was all about just like action adventure. It wasn't necessarily military thing or whatever. It was just you know they went out and did all kinds of adventures. They had cool vehicles, cool weapons, all this kind of stuff. Um, and uh, I forgot what where I was going with that, but. <laughs> Yeah, you don't want to uh, be the little kid. Uh, DC was little. Oh, kid the DC, stuff. Yeah. yeah. So DC, I don't know. It, a lot of the stuff just kind of seems silly to me. Uh, I and it still does. Um, even Batman, even though Batman is portrayed a lot of times as this bad, dark, uh, all kinds of nasty, violent, all this stuff, he's he's a guy in a bat suit. It's like uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's, I mean. <laughs> I mean, I'd love to write a Batman story. I got Batman stories, you know, that I would love to do. But if I did it, it would you wouldn't really see Batman that much. He'd be kind of like the alien in Alien, you know, where he's sort of like this mysterious thing that you don't really see to, you know, instill fear and all this kind of stuff in people. But, yeah, I don't know. It's just um, DC. When I was little, DC didn't really do anything for me. Later on, I think after they did the um, – Crisis on Infinite Earths, I think, yeah. where they rebooted everything, yeah, like in '86 or something. Then I I tried some of the things like Flash. Um, there was a Mike Barron did a Flash, uh, the series for. I thought that was pretty good. I, I like that, and also I think Jackson. I don't know how to pronounce his last name, Geis or something. G U I C E. Yes. He did the art on that. I thought it was really awesome. I liked his art. And, you know, Todd McFarlane did the uh, Batman Year Two. That's when I first saw his art. And I was like, holy shit, this is awesome. Um, so I got more into DC then. Uh, but I still, I think I just, I gravitate more towards the characters in Marvel. I think, like we were talking before, like they're more kind of like grounded and they're yeah. more like everyday sort of like Punisher, you know, uh, Daredevil. The X Men, even though they're like have these all crazy powers, you know, Chris Claremont wrote them. 
where it focused more on just like the normal everyday, usually a normal everyday and like interpersonal things. Um, so I just, I like that kind of stories and characters more. So it's MCU. I mean, the MC, uh, and as far as the movies go, I think the Marvel movies and with all their problems, they're like way better than the DC movies so far. Uh, I, I thought the first Wonder Woman movie was all right. Um, that's that second one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that we, that one was crazy. I was like watching that. I was like, what the fuck is going on? We've, we've <laughs> spoken about that's, it here. Plenty that's of literally the same reaction. I was like, um, did the same person direct this movie? <laughs> like, what happened? <laughs> how are they getting in a jet that's at a museum and it's got fuel in it? What the yeah. fuck? <laughs> is this well, a cartoon? Well, what? They, they granted the wish. A man from his life. Yes. She just said, oh, you no longer yeah. can live your life. Uh, yeah. That's kidnapping and also rape. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but but yeah, I mean... It's like sensual. But, but, but I mean, when Gal Gadot does it to you... Oh, yeah, I bet. Yeah. It, it's yes. consensual whether you like, know like, about it or not like you come you come back and be like okay so what did you guys do to me and i was with her let it slide yeah let you, it slide. Uh, that's yeah, when I'm, you do that are I'm you gonna about admit about that because did you take pictures <laughs> yeah, i need yeah, proof yeah yeah, yeah. Did, you, did, you, did you take out your little polaroid and yeah it's 84 by the way yeah. it's 1984 folks with the big oh, flash yeah, on right. it members jackets <laughs> there was polaroid there was polaroid yeah there there was was, that's when you tell her we're gonna have to do this shit again to make sure yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now you that i'm awake still, see if you still like it <laughs> yeah that's you have cool. a favorite mcu movie actually like one that you're like i can watch it and not be completely Ugh. captain america winter soldier right yes yeah. yeah that's it yeah. i mean I've, I've probably seen that one about five or six times yeah you know a lot of times they'll show it sometimes on tv and stuff and when i've had cable or whatever so yeah that's one that i think i can just sit down and watch and enjoy it every time not necessarily that it's amazing movie but i think it's probably the best one and uh yeah so yeah so <laughs> i don't know it's hard to say because it's like uh I mean, yeah, I think I like the first Iron Man. I think the first one because it was sort of like it started everything. Mm -hmm. And I was really kind of blown away that they took it seriously. Yeah. They seemed to put like real effort into it to make it like a real movie. It didn't matter that it's a superhero or anything. And so when I first saw that at the theater, I was like, holy shit, this is. And Robert Downey Jr. is really good yeah. as Tony Stark. So I think. It would probably maybe be a tie between those two. I think it's and the the, the scene where he uh you know when he finally breaks out of the cave, he builds and he's just you know mowing through people. That's freaking awesome. I love that. And I'll I will I will say this the and uh what was the end game, you know, when Thanos is beating the shit out of Thor, he's got him on the ground, and then Mjolnir flies and knocks him out, and then Mjolnir comes back and it's cap. Dude, I this close to jumping out of my seat yes. in the theater. I was like, motherfucker! <laughs> Cap, Cap That's did close. it. I'm goosebumps. As you say, I'm getting goosebumps. Yep. Like, yeah. Cap happening. actually jumped out of his seat. My brother Cap, he yeah. actually jumped out of his seat. Yeah. The minute Molière started moving, he knew it was Cap. He knew it was Cap. He's like, nope, Cap did it. <laughs> he just, yeah. yeah, it was. We almost started yeah. a world rumble in that one. Yeah, that was. I, 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 what, that's what I can say about that movie is like that's the only time in my entire life, every movie I've ever seen, that has moved me like that to that point. That's it. It is, it is just, oh, well, I mean, it's one thing because, you know, obviously I'm a big fan of Cap and, you know, but they built up that moment so perfectly and it, it hit so perfectly. Oh my God. I, I was like, oh, yeah. I yeah, caught yeah. myself. I was like, holy <laughs> shit. That, and sometimes I'll go. You know, just to like pick myself up, I'll go watch that clip on YouTube and stuff. Just be like, oh fuck, this is that's amazing. a that's a great motivational uh, yeah, clip to watch for sure, yeah. Yeah. for yeah. sure. But then it's they kind of screwed it's... it up because With... he he beats the shit out of Thanos, but then Thanos just rolls away and then just knocks him out. 
Yeah. And then Captain, but then Captain Marvel comes and saves the day. It's like, ah, uh, he should have, and Cap should have like destroyed him. I mean, he should have been like almost dead there, because then you kind of, if you, if he doesn't happen, then you kind of undercut that moment. It's like it should be this huge moment where he stands up to him, he beats the shit out of him, and he's finally going to kill this motherfucker. And then, but then, some whatever something happens, release but the he kind of just yeah, but he just like hits him a bunch of times and he falls down, but then he kind of just rolls out of the way and knocks him off, and he's he's like not really fucked up or anything. So that was my one complaint about that kind of thing. I think it should have been more devastating to Thanos. And then I would have had like more of an effect. Like you'd been, oh fuck, holy shit! Yeah, like you know? that hurt. Like yeah, okay, yeah. that hurt. Yeah. yeah, instead of just like eating it. Funny enough, um, if 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 you want to thank anything and anyone for Iron Man, you need to thank the original Daredevil movie. Yeah, that's where John Favreau actually spoke to Marvel and said, "Yo, you guys are serious about all this Marvel stuff? I got a premise for Iron Man. If you guys are trying yeah. to hear it." And boom. And yeah. then we have to thank Blade. And then Blade. And then Blade. And then Blade. Oh, yeah. Blade, Blade saved awesome financially. Because Blade made the made the money. Financially. See, so yeah, Blade made the money. Blade kept the lights on. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and, and yeah, wasn't get... it like the first one that was it was real serious too? Yeah. It was yeah. took the character seriously and it's R rated. So it's like it's a superhero. Mm-hmm. I think because you know, most average people on the move they have no idea that it's a superhero thing. It's yeah. just this action horror kind of thing. Yeah, because they, remember came out with they three. said new, new Line Cinema, and then Marvel was really small on the bottom of like the box of the VCR <laughs> box. Remember that kid? Yeah. <laughs> like a little thing you see Marvel. I was like, wait, Blaze from Marvel? Then I looked it up and I go, he looks nothing like this guy from the 70s in the shades. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they fixed him up real nice. Oh, yeah, for the better. Yeah, especially if you look at the. The Marvel movies before, oh, like the Captain America the movies Captain America? of the seventies. Oh God! Yeah. The Captain America with the with the rubber ears. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but when I was a kid, I thought that was awesome. Of course. Yeah. Just just seeing him in live action and throwing the shield and all that I was like, holy crap, this is awesome. But then, of course, you know, like a little bit later, you're like, oh God, this is horrible. It's funny. It was me watching Blade, then watching that, and going, holy shit. Yeah, that was horrible. I mean, even yeah. even Lou Ferrigno's Hulk, that shit oh. was that shit was incredible. My dad and I used to just sit and well, my dad was a huge fan of Lou Ferrigno, but like more the bodybuilding stuff. My dad was really into like bodybuilding, but we used to sit down and watch Hulk all the time. And yeah, you go back and look at that Hulk show, and it's like, wow, it's really bad. I'm, but at I'm the time, I'm more sorry for somebody at the end of every Hulk episode. Oh yeah, <laughs> he's always. And then, you know, the, that theme song plays at the end. You're like, I hope he finds a ride. <laughs> <laughs> Get a bicycle, man. Yeah. Word. Yeah, right. yeah. How'd you guys feel about that Fantastic Four movie from the, from the 80s? From the 1990s? Oh. Yeah, that whatever oh that was from Which the other one? universe. My God. That, the I one they didn't just... release? Roger Corman one? Yep. Yeah, that that was pretty horrific. Yes, absolutely. But it's like it's like beautifully horrific, man. (laughs) That's kind of that's kind of why I like Cobra Kai, man, because it's like it has that cheesy '80s like drip all over it. You know what I mean? Like, and it's just in a fun way that we see in it now in like 2021. Like, I would have definitely went to school a lot more if my school was like like the one in Cobra Kai. You just beat the shit out of each other. Yeah, for sure. And then spinal injuries occur. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> you know what's fun? You know what's one movie that was um like a seen away from being like a seventies porn? That's the Doctor Strange movie. Have you guys ever seen it? It was made in the seventies. It is it. absolutely horrific. I but it's a that. step away from a seventies porn. Like there was a lot. There was a lot of shit Albuquerque, back then. It takes a left on Albuquerque. It everything about it leads to that. Damn. I, and then that one, he's not even a surgeon. He's a psychiatrist. I was like, what? <laughs> Sur- surgeons weren't as sexy as they are now. That's true. Well, yeah, I mean, when you're driving a a, 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 a what is it a, a, a Lamborghini Diablo to wreck your hands, 
<laughs> yeah. Did you, Mike? Did you take a look at the what if stuff that they did? No, I have. I haven't seen anything. Like the last thing that I saw was the Wandavision. I don't know. Uh, we just had like the uh, uh, Disney Plus, like a short uh, trial thing. Like a trial. So I we watched Wandavision and uh, I first or second season of Mandalorian. Um, that's it. I haven't seen any of the newer stuff yet. Uh, I've heard all kinds of stuff. You know, some people love like Loki. Some people hate Loki. All this kind of stuff, whatever. So I don't know. I have like a hard time, you know, like think I'm going to pay for this streaming service, this streaming service, this streaming service. That's fair. That's fair. It's like, like, come on, man, get real. Uh, it's just, just cable. It's just cable. When you pretty much, you have five, yeah. six different streaming services. All cable, no pay per view. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's kind of kind of ridiculous, but uh, yeah. I mean, like I said, I re- I really enjoyed WandaVision, uh, but like uh, a lot of the things nowadays is kind of like really weird. Like the Snake Eyes movie oh. came out. I was gonna ask you like, about that. I, love that I couldn't finish that yeah. shit. Yeah, it's like, I don't understand this idea of like let's take this character concept and make it uh today but let's change everything that made it popular in the beginning why would you do that that doesn't even make any sort of logic at all i don't even remember it's like it's like this character is popular and it you know it's famous and it's well liked because of all these elements but if you take those elements and change them why would anybody like that? Yeah. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. So, I mean, it's like. I can't even it was, remember it that much. I, I remember watching it and just not finishing. I was like here just sitting, watching on the computer. I To be fair, I watched two movies that day. I watched Venom. I watched Venom 2. And then I went back and I said, you know what? Let me watch Snake Eyes. I had completely skipped out on it. It's funny because you know, Black Widow was the G.I. Joe movie that, <laughs> yeah. we, the, the, that, that, I, that we wanted. It didn't really Pretty much. work out that way, but that was it. That was the G.I. Joe movie that you should really actually, watch. Yeah, I, yeah I, I once you started talking, I was like, I don't want to see this. The snake eyes I know and love doesn't talk. I'm sorry. Yeah. You guys picked, you guys might have picked the worst character to have his own movie. And I mean, you 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 got to make someone talk, but like... You can do like a like a Tom Hardy Mad Max thing. I think he had like five lines that entire movie. Absolutely, yeah. And one of my favorite ones, like that's bait. That's yeah, it. That was up. a lot. Yo, he hadn't said anything for like the last five minutes and like another ten minutes after that. Just like all he said. The movie's incredible. I fucking love that flick. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's funny because you, what you would have to do is he he lo- he has his throat slit or whatever, right? And that's in the very beginning of the movie because he's an orphan. He, he gets sent there. And then after that, he can, you, I mean, in 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 not in um, a lot of places in a lot of TV shows and movies, you have people that do sign language. Snake Eyes can't do that. He can't. And sign language is all the good. sign language of people. And sign yeah, language, everybody done that in one of the cartoons. Yeah, one of the one in the, the, in the, um, the, the one where there's the A team, which I absolutely love, and they cut it short. Renegades. He does the whole. Yeah. I'm like, yes, he doesn't speak. That would yeah. actually been perfect. Yeah. The other yeah. thing I was thinking is like, because, you know, his face is supposed to be fucked up. Mm-hmm. And I think obviously one of the things they have to deal with is actors, you know, want to show their pretty faces all the time. So they don't want that. But, you know, in the comic book, a lot of times he wore like a latex fake face over himself. Mm-hmm. So they could have just done that in the movie. He said like, you know, the actor's face was the fake latex thing. And you could have just had one scene where he took it off and it showed like his fucked up face. And then the rest of it could have been whatever. And then you could still have maintained, you know, some sort of uh, semblance of what that character originally was. It would have been like Dark Man. What Dark Man did. Yeah. He had a little temporary face that like boils over after a certain time. It like, it yeah. like melts or something. It's so Yeah, weird. yeah, yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? No, it's but, like, yeah. no, the, these people, these people like to purposely mess things up. I, I keep going back to the fiasco with the Sonic movies. Like they had this like humanoid Sonic that they wanted to portray in the Sonic movie. 
and the internet lost it. Like, right. no, you're not doing this. And like, that was like the first time we've seen the internet like really bully like a, a big property and a big name like that to getting what they wanted. They redid Sonic, and now we have Sonic 2, which looks all types of fun. I mean, I get it. You know, it's it's a lot more childlike because you know, the MCU is childlike. You know, let's let's be honest. You know, but yeah. like this is more childlike. But like now we have Knuckles, we have Tails. If that humanoid Sonic would have came out, there would have been a lot of people with no jobs no more. Like it was yeah. incredible. That was wow. It's like they purposely like to do it, and it's like. I look at both of those Sonics. Look at the chat panel. I want you to just put, I've done this many times, at least 10 different times. I've put that original Sonic thing to what we ended up with. And I'm just like, why? And I don't know. I don't understand, you know, I don't understand movies and, and anything like that. But that shit was just weird. And then if we, let's say, let's say, that humanoid Sonic did make it, whatever. Then we have part two with that Sonic. So we're going to get humanoid tails. We're going to get humanoid mm -hmm. knuckles. That would have been disturbing. Mm -hmm. That's the porn that you were talking about right there. Yeah, like, yeah, you know, that's, that's exactly uh, it, yeah. And it's funny. I, I want to give props to Jim Carrey for coming back to the 90s. Jim Carrey, he was. And now, apparently, in this one, he actually looks more like Dr. Robotnik. He's bald, yeah, and that's the whole... You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, he looks silly, though. I'll be honest. He looks oh, very silly. You he looks you. very silly. But then that again... That looks silly in the game. That, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Robotnik is silly. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. <laughs> you know but you can't... Who's better to play a silly character like that than Jim Carrey? Absolutely. Who his, if, 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 if Robin, if, if Robin Williams was around, that would have been oh, no, the... Yeah, yeah. That would have been a, a great Robotnik for sure. Yeah. yeah, I would definitely... That's, that's either Jim or Robin, 100%. Nobody else. But it's kind of like the Transformers yeah. movies. With, with the Michael Bay Transformers movies? Yeah. Uh, like I, I, change the, Sir, no, I, change I, the like, I, design. I want you to Bumblebee. And that's all I'm yeah. saying about that. Bumblebee, that's it. Bumblebee got it right. That other, I don't know. Yeah. Those other ones. Put a big screen. Put a big screen. So put a big screen. Uh, uh... Or, or folk, can you focus on that screen like you do all of ours? I mean, could it's look at that atrocity? Why would they do that? I don't oh, understand. Like, why understand. would the suits come in and just be like, "Yeah, we want Sonic like that"? Let's remember, we spoke about this before. The suits wanted to make Blade white. They did want to make Blade. Remember white. that they did. Yeah, I don't know if you knew that, Mike. They wanted to make Blade white, uh, and the director you. was like, "Uh, no, that's not the point." Yeah. Have you picked up the comic? I'm showing you. Look at the comic book. He's I said it. I'm I'm okay. I've said it before. I'm okay with with racial swapping. I'm all right. But some people you can't do that to. Look at that. Look at that Sonic. What we got was on the left, and then that humanoid. I don't understand that freaky thing. It's so <laughs> weird. Was, I guess they were going yeah. for an actual hedgehog. The way humanoid. No, there were. Like... It, it was. It was a human. They wanted a humanoid, and it's like yeah. no. I can I understand know. if they didn't do a CGI and I was a child in the in the suit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but but that's completely CGI. There's no excuse for this shit. And you know what's been like crazy? Mac and me. Yeah, Mac, yeah. Mac, and oh me. <laughs> Mac and me. Mac and me. Mac and me. So wow. it's funny because that and that image that you had there, they actually did touch it up once already to mm -hmm. make it look a little better. And then they were like, no. Give us Sonic. And people were just sending pictures and all of these internet dudes that have talent were like, no, this is how you make them look. Look, I'm giving you the design right here. I don't want you to pay me any money for this. Just <laughs> take it. Like, do this. And yeah, they legit bullied an entire studio. Yeah, Cap goes, there's misguided people that are our age that have nothing to say and no original ideas that try to make shit. They're even older than most of us, too, yeah. which is the worst part. Like, um, it, it's that type of, a, you know, when the producer comes in and it's like, my son likes this, so we will add this. And it's like, your son's kind of a douche, bro. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know <what> I'm saying? <laughs> like, no offense. Like, you're, you're like we're not just going to do this based on your kid. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and that happens go, so much, man. Like, when did your son become a become a part of my production team? Yeah, right. Like, anytime soon, he go fuck off. Fuck him. Yeah. The the minute people go, like, yo, let's make now. the Transformers yeah. movie, but change it up. You already you already failed. Like yeah. it was it was like the Transformers movies were fun and it was cool to see you know some Transformers out there, but I mean there's just way too much people. <laughs> like like. Which book yeah, book I couldn't even tell what their faces were. That's the yeah. problem for me. It's like it's just a jumbled mess of shit. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I mean, it should be fairly simple design, so you know, instantly recognizable. This is their faces, you know, whatever. But it, uh, to me, the, that they were fucking horrible designs. Oh yeah. Why? Why did they? Why did they need lips? <laughs> Optimus at no point when I was growing up had lips, but he literally had like a yeah. like a like the mask. literally a ninja mask. Yeah, and then when he fights, he puts it on. And I go, why does Optimus have lips? This is weird. But the weirdest shit I've ever seen. The best thing they did was bringing Megan Fox because you know you can't make a Transformer movie without a hot chick in it. Yeah, like what? <laughs> All like, the robots need need somebody you know, to look at. You know what's funny? That's the credit I give to uh, I give to Winter Soldier. There was no love story. There yeah. was a friendship. Yep. But there was no love story. Yeah. Like they didn't need to boggle the thing. I, I guess mean, the if you if you if, between Cap and Bucky, and then if and you the ask the right people, Sam, yeah. If you ask the right people, the love story was Bucky and Cap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you ask the and right then, people, if you ask, and the then right Sam people. coming in and cheating and them cheating. No. With that, yeah, but still, there was no. Oh my God, I have to rescue the world. I have to rescue them because of her. No, 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 no. No, this is wrong. Cap yeah. goes, this is wrong. And I no need to Lewis stop Lane syndrome. Yeah, yeah, we don't need no Lois Lanes up in here. No Lois yeah. Lane syndrome. <laughs> That's no right. MJ. No MJ syndrome. Yeah. Although MJ was pretty cool. I mean, the last I, I, no Tobey like, Maguire like, MJ. Like in movies, do you in your movies that you watch? Do you need a love interest, or you're like it doesn't matter to you? Because I know some people is essential. For especially for like action and sci-fi movies. So they 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 now that now that like these guys can talk about you know their role in Spider-Man and all of that. You know, Toby's been out there doing interviews, Andrew's been out there doing interviews. So they keep asking them, like they keep asking Andrew, like, yo, would you come back to be Spider-Man? He was like, you know, if the script is right and and, and I like it, yeah, I would. And they started a they explain the screenwriters explain the wish and we were we were right there is physical evidence has been wiped out so spider-man peter parker no longer has records in that school which is why he needs the ged and they're kind of doing like the back to the future thing where he like gets deleted from pictures and things like that it's funny because the mcu has been using the back to the future model so much but then they shit on back to the future while doing it it's pretty funny like you have that moment with scott lang he's like so back to the future is a bunch of bullshit <laughs> so it's like <laughs> but they're literally taking the tropes from back to the future it's pretty funny and ironically if if you were to make a if the mcu i don't know if you guys seen that instagram meme if the mcu was in the 90s and who they had playing the characters Oh yeah, Michael J. Fox was Spider Man, which makes sense. Like, who else would be Spider Man in the nineties? Tobey Maguire. <laughs> yeah, makes Remember, sense. That's, and like he said, the whole pretty facing. That's why Tom Cruise didn't do Iron Man, even though yeah. although had there's the whole, rumors he had Robert Downey Jr. in the suit, like it was looking at the whole time. There's rumors though. There's rumors yeah, that yeah. there will be an Iron Man variant in Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness, and it will be played by Tom Cruise. I don't know how I feel about that. We need a whole nother podcast. I don't yeah, know for real. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so Cap goes, it's funny for the first Transformer movie, a guy Hasbro saw the design of the robots and said, How the fuck am I supposed to make toys out of that? Yeah. So <laughs> meanwhile, there's a whole lineage of toys before. Like Me meanwhile, that's how they started. <laughs> it literally went from Japan to here, and then oh my god, yeah, it's very that's like saying how I'm gonna make toys out of Power Rangers. You mean the Super Sentai's? Yeah, basically. You, you wonder how you make Power, but man, they make toys out of everything there. <laughs> I saw them um, in the that Netflix uh, show. 
the toys the that made the toys that made us explaining all of Power Rangers and how this kid uh Nick Saban like was just in his hotel room just like watching these like this you know this Japanese show it's just like yo we could do that in America just put a bunch of put a ragtag team of kids and that was funny yeah yeah I remember seeing them I think it was like on a Showtime it was like some show or night flight or something it was like it was a really early 80s it was late at night and i remember seeing this crazy dude japanese dudes running around jumping around fighting stupid monsters and stuff and then like whatever five six seven years later that here come power rangers yeah. i'm like this looks familiar <laughs> i know i've seen this before they literally just took footage like yeah. most of the most of the time when they're in the ranger suits like fighting monsters that's footage from this japanese show and there yeah. was like this crazy loophole there's like bro i'm not not really showing anything you know part of the show i'm just like borrowing this footage and this guy nick saban who was he's kind of he's very he's you know greasy kind of you know you know he's a dirtbag. yeah shaking hands greasing palms you know he's that type of guy so he made it work and then they sold the shitload of toys. The I'll never forget the first time I was able to actually obtain this action figure. I actually got two. I got in Tommy and Jason, the ones that flip the head, and it's like human. It's like and they flip, and then you know they have the helmet on. It's like a it's like, like they morph. Yeah, bro, and like like nothing else moved. <laughs> they were like this. They were like this the entire time. But the head flip. That's all I needed. That's all I, 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 yep. I remember telling, I remember telling my lady this right. This, and this is I'm I'm gonna show my age hard right here, right? So I remember I would never get like weapons as a kid, right? Really young. And then my grandmother was just like, God, oh, get it for him. It's okay. So I got the He-Man sword, right? Yeah. First thing I do is I pop my female cousin in the head. Bet. <laughs> I haven't had that sword out the box. I've had it for two seconds, and I'm like. <laughs> like, then I go, yo, I want the Thundercat sword. Sort of old, <laughs> clearly, right? Yeah. yeah. Like, same deal, right? Out the box. And like when you hit something, it lights up. Worst thing to ever give a kid like It incentivized me. you hitting people. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. And they made it worse because I'm like, all right, all of a sudden, chopping legs. I'm like, every leg I see, I'm just. <laughs> and then on top of that, I've seen every ninja movie possible to this point. So I'm swinging it the way I see them swinging it. So I'm catching everybody beautifully. And it's like, do you remember? Do you remember so that? That's for so happy I never got the dragon dagger. Yo, so it's like there would have been left. Do you what remember that? Um, there was a point where the 99 cent stores mm -hmm. would sell all of these old school DVD Hong Kong cinema style. Mm -hmm. So I would buy all of those. My dad worked, and my dad was huge into the Hong Kong cinema as well. And we used to sit down and watch a whole bunch of stuff. And he would bring them. It was a dollar a piece. He'd just get all the new ones that were there. Come home every Friday with like 15 of these movies. I don't think I watched half of them, but we watched a lot. So, Led, do you remember when we would take the movies over to your house? You know, we were just like drinking and, you know, doing a bunch of stuff. We mm -hmm. would put the volume down and mm -hmm. just dub the movies yes. ourselves. <laughs> Yo, know, we yes. used to have a ball. We why we never recorded anything of that. We should have recorded it because we were be doing that shit before stuff. people were doing it. You know, yep. crazy. It yeah, was, I used to do that when I was a kid too. Yeah, was yeah I, remember, um, I, I wanted to do that for the the movie podcast, but we already been uh, suspended on YouTube once. So got, yeah, got suspended. I remember yeah. watching um, Ninja's Revenge, and for yo when. I would say this in school all the time. It didn't make any sense. I'd be like, yeah, only a ninja could kill a ninja. The kids are like, what does that mean? Yeah. You're not listening to me? <laughs> only a ninja could kill a ninja. They're like, what? And I'm thinking in my head, all you guys don't see these movies? Yeah, right? No. Only a ninja. I'm like, it's, I swear to God, I, everybody looked at me like I lost my mind. But I'm like, you don't get it. You've never seen this movie? Ninja can kill a No, all right, whatever. You're not cool. And Word. then America it just got worse for me. Nah, I hear you. Yo, fun fact, talking about the Power Rangers, the first season had 64 episodes. Oh, it, it, was, it was ridiculous. Yeah. Yes. Yes. There was a new episode every day. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll, ever never, I'll never forget. I'll never forget when the OJ Simpson trial like prevented the show yeah. from airing. <laughs> I got home from school, like, what is this? Where is Power Rangers? <laughs> like, son, for like, yo, the entire trial, if it went to three o'clock, we weren't getting Power Rangers. I remember for an entire two weeks, I was coming home griping, like, yo, mom, what is this? She's like, son, it's it's a big trial. I'm like, I don't, I don't care what this guy did. My mom's like, it's pretty messed up what he did. Or but allegedly, allegedly. Th that's the real reason why people were mad that he was innocent. You wasted all that time. I could have watched Power Rangers. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> it was so frustrating. Yeah, I remember that. 64 episodes. My yeah, God. man. And um, this guy, um, man, I can't believe his name is is escaping me right now. Tommy. He's like, he's like still super into it. Like he's in Comic Cons everywhere. Um, Jason David Frank, I believe. Jason David Frank, there it is. He done MMA fights. Yeah, he yeah. went to MMA. Like he's like, but like he's always like, bro. There's like a video of like these kids that their car broke down in the street, and it's just just JDF. Like, imagine your car breaks down in the street, and the one person that comes to help you is the Green Ranger. I'm just like, is he in the suit? I know he. You I'm know, pretty funny. Sure he, started, though. he joked. He joked and said, "Yo," because someone asked that same question. He joked and like, "Yo, if I would have had my suit, I'd have put it on and gone and helped those and guys." Played He's the totally into the role. Yeah. So like a lot of the other guys, a lot of the other guys, they'll do appearances and and he'll call them up and whatever. But like he is totally into it. Like he wears that shit. He has it all tatted on himself. He still is madly in love with the Green Ranger and like. He's he, all he for that shit. He understands that the reason he has a big house and all that is because he was a power yep. ranger at one point. He signed royalties. Yeah, of course. He signed royalties. He's smart. Yeah. I did, did enjoy I did enjoy him as the White Ranger. And I enjoyed the movie too. The movie was so bad, but yeah. Yo, the did, first one. Did the Power Rangers do an episode with the Ninja Turtles? I don't remember mm. that. They did. There's the they did? crossover event of the century. Mm. <laughs> it was bad. It was you know bad. What's funny? The turtle show was bad. Which that turtle one? show was atrocious. Oh, the live man. action with, with the, uh -huh. the live action one that they had the girl turtle in there. I'm not gonna lie, I watch it for the memes. I love watching <laughs> old ridiculous shit like that. Like I just found, I just found the original live action adaptation of The Witcher. It's from like 1980s. It's in all right. Amy, have a good night. With like, all right, peace out, y'all. Thank you for coming, Amy. Appreciate that. Um, so it's like live adaptation 80s, it's all in German with mm -hmm. the most horrible translation <laughs> ever. There is mistakes in the subtitles, it's beautiful, bro. It's actually called it was aired as the hexer. Not the Witcher. It's just like two hours long. It's on YouTube. I watched the entire thing. M magnificent. I I remember watching Ultraman. I forgot what channel it was on. It wasn't Sci-Fi Channel wasn't a thing yet. And I was like, "Oh, this is dope." And then I saw Superhuman Cyber Samurai. Oh, Superhuman Samurai Cyber. And I was oh like, "So, Ultraman in a computer?" Yeah, yeah. And I remember saying that, you know, saying that in school, and it was blasphemy. No, I was like, "Yeah, <laughs> Ultraman." In it's a it's legit a ripoff of Ultraman. Like a hundred percent, but I'm, that was one of the sickest, uh, one of the sickest intros. Super oh, here's a fun Samurai. fact: the VR Troopers thing was supposed to be a pilot from for the Green Ranger to do his own thing. So yeah, JDF was supposed to be the the main VR dude Troopers. in in yeah. VR Troopers. Yeah, yeah. and it's yeah. also another Japanese scent. <laughs> yeah. By the way, the three people in it. They had nothing to do with each other. Those were three separate shows that they put into one. Holy shit. That's why you never see those characters together when it's in Japanese version. Only when it's American. Really? Yep. Yo, Cap just said they just did an episode where all of the Rangers came together, even the OGs. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. They do, they've done that multiple times. One of the best episodes that they ever did when all of the Red Rangers came out. That show was actually pretty sick. When, where are they showing this shit? <laughs> Uh, you don't watch Fox I forgot, anymore. I, who owns I, yo, I, I have know, cable. I, know, I don't, I don't watch. I watch the I Netflix. Disney, I don't know if Disney owns them or Hasbro. 
homes and that. Somebody owns the rights for all of them, so they use it all the time. Saying, I know all, you know it's all over Netflix, by the way. I know that episode is probably somewhere on Netflix. Don't sleep. I'll be, I'll be, I tell people all the time, don't sleep on the new CGI Ninja Turtles on Nickelodeon. Oh, yeah. I no, watch, that, yeah. I, I used to watch that show with my son, and there's actually some like pretty good stuff in there. Master Splinters, 10 out of 10. And they have like a whole three part episode, uh, like a three uh, uh, episode arc where they actually go back to like, you know, the 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 the, the, the Yamato clan, the Hamato clan with him and Splinter and Shredder, like when they were like human and, and shows pretty fact, sick. You guys get a chance. There's a comic book with the uh, the Ghostbusters meeting the Ninja Turtles and it's. <laughs> Pretty dope. It's dope. The Ninja Turtles did a lot of crossovers. And then there's the Ninja Turtles mean the Power Rangers the right way. There's another comic for that. You know, Batman meant the Ninja Turtles. Yeah, Batman. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. The Ninja Ninja Turtles Turtles were everywhere. The Ninja Turtles get a turtle sword, I believe. Shit. I'm not lying. I'm not lying. I'm telling you. Well, I mean, uh Don Donatello could do whatever the fuck whatever he wants. He's a genius. Spider Man in the Sentai thing had a had a sword. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Mike. Uh, and Stanley loved that, by the way. Yo, Stanley was like, "How this is not a big thing in the U.S." It's true. I'm like, "Yo, Stan, you were ahead of the time. Had you been five years a little more, you would have got it." Bro. Stan is a gift. Stan was Word. a gift. Yo, Mike. Uh, Pro Wrestling Podcast one asks, "Would you ever uh, consider doing a Lord of the Rings type fantasy comic?" Uh, well, I do have um. I was talking about I'm going to have a horror anthology later this year. And one of the stories in there is kind of like a Warcraft, Conan, dark fantasy um, story. And um, he's it's sort of like the main character is kind of like a Frankenstein monster mixed with uh, all this kind of stuff. And his the whole deal is like he's kind of like a, an old school like a, a knight and they're like the there's a new sort of like dark magic coming into the world that's trying to you know like subjugate everything and so he stands as sort of like an old school sign of kind of representative uh against that um so that's i guess kind of like lord of the rings sort of stuff uh my brother was like really into lord of the rings when i was a kid but I never really got that much into it. Um, I guess the fantasy stuff doesn't really kind of do much for me. But I think if you, <clears throat> with other elements in that, like horror and the darker fantasy kind of thing, that I I, I like that. That's pretty cool. It's just fucking uh, some like kind of some like dark world? magic beast eating fucking hobbits. Let's <laughs> yeah. go. Let's yeah. go. Army of the Dead. Are you a fan of Army of the Dead? Army of the Dead. I've I was never really big on zombies either. That was something that uh, I mean, Evil I, Dead. Uh, evil Dead. Yeah, evil like dead. all of that stuff. I, I don't know. I just I don't know why some things like don't uh, didn't really like because uh, I had a friend long time ago. He he's talking about you know like uh, Romero, all the old zombies things. He's like, yeah, you gotta gotta see these. These are excellent. And it's like I never really just uh, got into it. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't want to talk bad about it because maybe some people's feelings will be hurt. <laughs> oh man, that's that's our <laughs> specialty yeah, over here. You know, yeah, yeah. You, when you Cap, know what you when can Cap do Cap when here. you when you get your feelings hurt around here. You can go fuck yourself. <laughs> Cap, Cap couldn't wait to get on here for the uh, Spider Man episode to hurt some yes. feelings. Yeah, yeah, yes. Just like I, I couldn't, I couldn't wait to get on for the Eternals episode. I was like, um, no, 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 no. Yeah. it was absolutely no. Uh, no, 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 no. It wasn't a full no, but it's a, it's a yeah. big no. Like if it I was... wanted to see, if I wanted to see the Justice League, I watched the four hour one they made. It's, yeah, it yeah, was the I, Justice League we wanted though. Yeah, it's it's the most the most Marvel the most DC Marvel movie you will ever see, but that's a it's funny because that's what Mike was trying to get at earlier, and we've said this multiple times on this podcast. It's 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 better when you could just work with these ground level people and and not have to focus on gods. And I get it, Thor's a god, 
but Thor's also like a dork. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, he's like a big dork, and like, and you know, uh, Superman is, is not, is, uh, and Wonder Woman is not. Like, messing okay, with all these gods that, uh, is difficult. Uh, Thor is real stupid. Can we just be honest? Yeah, yeah. He's he, not the brightest bulb in the more in the Avengers pack. No, yeah. at all. Can we be honest. Yo, he's like 1,500 years old, yet he's still like a teenager. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he's more like a Viking, too. He's just yeah, like yeah. A, a brute. You know, yeah, he's not exactly. like... Like, he knows straight ahead the whole way. Meanwhile, everybody's yeah. like, yo, you know what we can do? We can go around. We don't need to go right at them. Have at thee. No, we go straight through them. Yeah, through, yeah. <laughs> Give me the what big about, one. <laughs> what about Alien? Anybody into that whole... Franchise, aliens, aliens I love, aliens. I, I yeah. absolutely love it. I absolutely. You read the recent uh, Marvel comics version? I didn't get a chance to do it. No, I got to get back on that. Yeah, but I'm a huge. I was just a huge fan of the first one, but the second yeah. one, for some reason, Aliens. I'm a, was... I'm a big action fan, but it it, yeah. it gravitated me because it combined three things that I'm a fan of: the horror, not so much, but I do like it, the sci-fi, and the and the action. Yeah, and then it made rear, and then it made so going we were so hot. I'm not gonna lie to you, that's a yeah. <laughs> no, rip, but rip I'm, a, I'm, a huge, I'm a huge Michael Bean fan, which yeah. a lot of people know say that he was, yeah, raised, I he's Hicks, you know what I mean? Yeah. He's like, he, he's like essentially the 80s hero that's not the hero, you know what yeah. I mean? Like a woman always betters him, yeah, but he's still cool. So yeah, I, yeah. I really, I, I, I liked, I liked aliens. I was, I was more on the predator camp, my dad. <laughs> like a lot of a lot of the stuff that I learned like that from my dad. It's funny, like I tell people all the time, you know, I I watched Star Wars episode four, five, and six for the first time like two years ago. <laughs> and everybody's like, yo, you're this you're like a big geek, bro. I'm like, yeah, I just kind of miss some of that stuff. Like my dad was not into the Star Wars or Star Trek, uh Star Trek. My dad was like a Schwarzenegger, Stallone, like that was my dad. My dad's like, yo, come look at fucking Stallone, you know, just empty out rounds for absolutely no reason. That was him. But he did introduce me to Alien, too. Alien was great. Uh, Alien Isolation, the, the video game, is pretty intense. So yeah. you're just, you're in a space station. Mm -hmm. You don't even see the alien for, like, the first four hours. You're in this, like, space station. And, you know, there's, like, bots, like, you know, you know like, cyborg people walking around, like, doing work around the space station. You can avoid them. But the point is that the alien is like following you. And, you know, and as far as artificial intelligence goes in a video game, this is probably the smartest creature I've ever seen in a video game. The craziest video, one of the craziest video game moments happened to me playing this game. So alien is like, you know, I'm, you know it's a lot of stealth involved. So I'm hiding. I kind of peeked out a little too much. Alien sees me. I'm booking it. And you got a, you got a flamethrower later on, which kind of makes you a little OP, but whatever. So Alien sees me. I'm booking it. I'm 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 getting away from him. I think he got like stuck on something. So I'm I'm gaining I'm gaining ground. I'm, I'm so then I see a door. I'm like I'm going into this door. I'm making a move. Bam! I go into the door. So I go in and immediately turn around looking at the door, and I'm kind of like backing up, and I'm backing up. Just looking at the door scene. I'm like, okay, no alien. I turn around, alien, right behind me. I was like, what? Like, where did you even come from? Yo, Alien Isolation is one of the scariest video games you ever play in your life. It's not like, it's a lot of jump scares, but it's like, you start seeing shit. Like, is that the alien over there? It's like, no, it's not. Like, you're bugging, but it's a cool game. You can find that shit for like 10 bucks right now. It's yeah. a really fun game. Yeah, I got it on the Xbox. So it got a little too frustrating for me. It, got, yeah, I, yeah, you need was, you need there patience. Was, there was one point where like you uh, you have to punch a bunch of levers to go. The through, puzzles, uh, the, the puzzles were weird. And then it's like I kept dying. I swear to God, like fifty times, and I couldn't get through it. And I was like, "Fuck this shit!" And like the, the, the <laughs> tracker, they, the tracker they give you is not too effective at points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a, it's a frustrating game, but like, man, it really like messed with me. Like hiding under the table, yo, and this motherfucker jumps on the table. Yeah. And then at first, I didn't know that this was a thing he can do. So I run into a room. I'm running away under a table. So, you know, he's coming in and I'm just, I think I was like looking at my phone. I'm like, I'm under the table. Just going to wait until this guy goes. Oh, no, no, no. He literally comes up. He's walking. He just goes, 
looks under. I said, what the fuck? You know, it's a really smart, the alien. He's super smart in that shit. But yeah, I was, I was, I was always more, you know, action, you know, predators is my guy. Yeah. Cap says predator all day. Yeah. Yeah. Predator. Yeah. Yeah. I like, the, it's like, there's like predator as a, like, I talk to people always tell me like, why do you like predator so much? It's just like a stupid movie about an alien. I'm like, no, you're missing the underlying tones. That movie is about respect. That's what that movie's about. Like, like the the predator, he, he he's a he's a hunt. Like he hunts. It's game for him. Yeah. You know, if you are not armed, he's not gonna touch you. That's such an important scene in that movie when Arnold tells the girl, it's like, no, don't grab the gun. That's why he didn't kill you. You know. And at the end of it, my favorite part is when you know they're like squared up face to face, and the predator sees he's looking at Arnold. That he's like, yo, there there's something about you, man. I don't know what it is, but you got my attention. And more importantly, you got my respect. I'm going to take all this shit off and we're going to duke it out. Mano yep. a mano. Yep. Like that was so dope. And it's like Arnold, like his job is to finish the mission. It, he also respects, you know, his team, his people, what he was sent out there to do. It's all about respect. Like anybody in that situation would just cover themselves in mud and get the hell out of there. No, we have possibly one of my favorite scenes of all time. Completely useless. Could have been cut. But when he when he sets the way, he has all the traps set. He's on top of a tree for no reason because it's like, you know, you're wasting time to get down or whatever. Like, and you're wasting time to get up there. But he lights up the thing and he just holds up a fire and just war cries. Just, oh, I... Man, I post that scene on my Instagram at least once every six months for whatever, whether it's I'm going to work or fantasy football. Like, I thought that there's a lot of respect in that movie. And and even even the respect between comrades, you know. Dylan, you, you son ain't of afraid a bitch. Of no man. Like, you ain't afraid of no man. And he was like, I don't no know man. what's out there, but it ain't no man. Like, oh, the movie's beautiful. I ain't got it's time beautiful. to bleed. Yeah, that movie's yeah. incredible. Oh, painless. Oh, yeah. yeah the, the movie's so good. Have, it's in the trees, I mean, man. It's just the, the way it starts. Caroline and Alien just get away from her. You bitch. I'm like, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> son, you call another woman a bitch. It's going to be a fight. Son. Oh, yeah. Now, that, now that Alien versus Predator movie, we don't talk about that. Oh, no. Yeah. That's, that's disrespectful. When well, she like, uh, grabs and, his head as a shield and he like... He like marks her like yo, you're down with the team now. Yeah, that like, was a bunch of Lois Lane in there. I would, I would prefer, <laughs> yeah. I would prefer Predator too. Although, although Predators with like this that. guy, what's his name? Adrian Brody. With Adrian Brody, Predators, not the best movie, but yeah, that sam bad. that samurai Predator that they're on in the fucking field and he just has his freaking sword. I'm like, I was like, what is happening? That was a big moment in the theater for me because, again, kind of like you, Mike, you know, weeb over here, you know, weeb yeah. life, you know, just <laughs> in, enthralled with, you know, the culture, you know, more Japan than, than China, of course. Yeah. But yeah. like, yeah, just unnecessarily buying too much ramen and, you know, you know, you know, <laughs> that, for real, just that ass. So like yeah, when, uh, I, when I saw that scene and, no. and I spoke about it the other day. Probably my favorite anime of all time, Ninja Scroll. That fight scene oh, with yeah. the with the blind samurai through the bamboo fields, like, like I I get that that trope in in Japanese cinema and and media that trope is like overdone. But dude, running through a bamboo field, like get out of here! I mean, get out of here! <laughs> I'm gonna have never to take you to Japan that. to do that. Like, uh, okay. I'm, I'm 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 working on Japan, bro. I it's, I just gotta get in one of the ships, bro. <laughs> like my, I could go with my job, but it's it's hard to get these uh, Japan voyages to like, get space to go in them. But I'll be out there soon. I'm waiting for, uh, for Nintendo Land, and I'm gonna get on a cruise with my job, all paid. And um, you know they give us a free one every six months. You know, so I'm gonna wait until Nintendo Land. I have the the thing. I'm gonna do ten days round trip Japan, and I'm gonna stay four days after in Tokyo, so I could go to Nintendo Land. That's the plan. I'm trying to do that either 22 or 23. That's the plan. 
Yo, Polar Knights, is that the only uh, comment you ever made, bro? He goes, I'm loving this podcast. It's every stage of beard growth. You said that like the last three <laughs> times he was on here. I appreciate it, bro. My my beard got a little bit, you know, thicker. I don't know if that, you know, floats your boat or anything. I'll put that on my OnlyFans. <laughs> well, we, 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 we appreciate you coming. We yeah. appreciate you watching. You know, yeah, this, this, was, this was a fun this was a very fun yeah, podcast this is a good one, yeah. for real I'm very... it's, it's great to see um something that we all we're all fans of to see someone that's doing it from the ground up yeah. that's what i'm saying like like dude yeah. you write comics like we have Absolutely, a comic book yeah. podcast and like you're writing comics like that's insane i don't know anyone who's ever attempted you know and even had any type of success at all you know in anything like this for you to do it and and, and been around so many people and done so many things like and it's a pleasure bro you ever want to come back and just shoot the shit sure well, absolutely, I, know, I know you got comics to write though i know you yeah. got shit to write <laughs> yeah you know you got kids to take care of i get yeah. it i get it i have a child myself i get it but man yeah it's super cool very very cool yeah it's cool i really appreciate you guys having me i, I, I really enjoyed it too and it's you know i love talking about stuff like this too and it's like i think obviously we got a lot of stuff in common you know sure grew up like liking liking the, a lot of the same things and you know I, I would love to come and just talk about anything it's it's, it's cool with me oh yeah we gotta uh, have you on when uh cap's here because you know cap is yeah absolutely he's the guru in this <laughs> you know he he knows some For stuff sure. about some stuff yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know it's funny that you see by the comic i've always wanted to not that's a remake or reboot but a different version or different angle of the running man because i've always loved the fact that that's where we're headed right now at this point pretty much I mean, it's not that far from being real yeah. yeah i've always wanted to see the running man from the stalker's angle you know what i mean like I what led you. each one of them to that point you know what i mean i've always wanted to see the other side of that well, if you do it now, you can actually have the vaccinated and the unvaccinated. Basically, basically. <laughs> you know? no, seriously. If you're, if you're if you're unvaccinated, you clearly you clearly have to be on the running man show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're the runner. <laughs> you're the runner. You know what I'm saying, and then we got the stalkers. They're all vaccinated yeah. fully and yeah. boosted. All we can consider we could consider running man like cyberpunk esque, right? If yeah. it is, yeah. you yeah. yeah. Any, any, anything, anything you put cyberpunk, you know, that setting in, in, in my face. Yo, yo, Blade Runner 2049. It's, it's, it's it's it, it, it did exactly what the first Blade Runner did. That like, shit was great. I it's love that happened. movie. Oh, no, it's his, beautiful. It's his awesome. apartment, his apartment was like incredible. Like I would just live in that apartment. Like, yeah, it looked horrible, but like. A lot of shit just looks not great yeah. in there. Yeah, the, the, the talking the talking chick was a little weird, but I mean that's that's where we're going. I mean, we got Siri. This you know? is true. Something that 2049 the, was missing was a was a good character like Rugger Howard with that 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 antagonist the whole time, you know. Because the girl was okay, but I was like, I wasn't as scared of her as I was of Rugger Howard. I really was not at all. I was like, Rugger Howard, he killed me. You put yeah. down, you put, you put, you put, nah, that's, that's, so, a, that's a big bias. Good. That's a big bias that I have. Like anything cyberpunk, bro. Like, yeah. you know, the, 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 although the release was terrible, the cyberpunk video game that just came out based on the, on the 20 of uh, the cyberpunk 2020 tabletop game. Again, it was a horrible launch and there was tons of problems, yep. but man, that I am, I'm still play that game. You know, I, it's, I, I just love that whole thing of like, you know this this future where the technology like fucks us over. I don't know. I think it's very interesting. I ready player. Re fan. We're we're getting there. Ready player one yeah. is gonna be a thing in like fifty years. Oh, the yeah. metaverse is real. I'm about to I, buy a VR system just so I can hit the metaverse running. I'm gonna be in there fucking around. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, I'm I'm there. Yo, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of the uh, the Escape from New York post apocalypse. Post okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I have. First time I saw that, I was like, Jack Burton with an eye patch. Because I saw I saw the the thing the other way. I saw Big Trouble Little China first. And then I saw Escape from New York. And I was like, huh. The half court heave. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's part two. That's part two. Yeah. That's Escape from LA. LA, but yeah. Escape from New York is, it had me dying because I was like, 
Hmm. New York's a prison. Never saw it that way. <laughs> Never saw it that way. I mean, okay. if oh, you've been government. to the Bronx. <laughs> the thing is, you yeah. see that you, in order to live, you got to think about it this. It's the other way around. In order to live, you got to get to the Bronx now. Ah, the Bronx see. is in jail. It's only Manhattan as jail. Ah, and see? It's the other way around. You know what I'm saying? So it's uh, it's always fun. When you the see world that. has and to be pretty messed up when the Bronx is the safe haven. This is true. And we're <laughs> heading there. We're <laughs> heading there. <laughs> like, yo, yeah. go get safety in the Bronx. Like, <laughs> what? Okay. As best but, you can. Yeah, the prison is Manhattan. Okay. okay. Something's wrong here in the world. Yeah. yeah. No, but that's definitely the... And it's funny. I was talking to my cousin about it, how Big Trouble Little China, every 80s Ninja movie, and Van Damme inspired um, and, uh, Mortal Kombat. Yep. <laughs> it's like, oh, for sure. There. Lo Pan is not Shang Tsung. You're blind. Yeah. Yo, speak, speaking of that, speaking of that, I, I say this so much that that CGI Ninja Turtles show on Nickelodeon, there's a whole episode dedicated to Big Trouble in Little China. They have the 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 three of the turtles get uh possessed by Lo Pan. He oh comes out of a knife. It's Lopan, the same dude, does the same thing, the voice, same guy. And three of the turtles, they end up with the straw hats and they have all the powers. Yep. Like the like the dudes. It's it's in it's incredible. And Michelangelo is what is who like snaps them out, or is it Leo? I don't know. But it's a whole movie dedicated on Lopan. They have one episode where it's all drawn in the original 1980 style. Like they understand that. People hate these remakes. And let's be honest, Ninja Turtle, Ninja Turtles has had a lot of failed rebooted cartoons. It's a few of them. I get it. And they understand this. So they respect the source material so much. There, there are a couple changes. There are, but like, you know, like they're younger. Um, you know, April and like um and Casey Jones are like high school. Yeah, you know, and April has powers. We have seen iterations of April with yeah. powers, but like they oh, that's true, that yeah. here. Yeah. And he says oh. Booyah Kasha instead of for uh Kaobunga. It's a, but that that's licensing stuff. No, no, I hate yeah, it, yeah. but I mean that's I, I kind of like that better that's than Kyle Bunga. You know, so, so have you watched the show? Like, bro, yeah, I yeah. no, yeah. That, that show is serious. Like, bro, I'm a I'm a have huge you, low Have you seen the new fan. have you seen the new season that came out like last year, two years ago? No, Where I it, stopped every, watching with my son. So they have a new season, but every episode is a different take on them. So there's actually a Mad Max version of Ralph in the in the <laughs> shit. Yeah, yo, it's it's crazy. It's like so, a, like last last Ronin. Yeah, so I was yeah. gonna say the last Ronin yeah, is pretty, a great take on yeah, that. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it it it's dope because each episode my, is different. One of my favorite episodes in the shit. I was watching it with my son, right? So my son, this is when I was like, okay, this show's serious because I would watch. My son was really young, so like he was at that age where I can leave him alone, but if I did, he'd probably fucking eat something. And probably choke. So I could have done, I could have walked around, but I was like, let me pay attention. He started really moving around a lot, and you never know. So, one episode, this is the episode that I was like, okay, I need to watch this from the beginning. So, the beginning of the second season. Um, so, the turtles go through it. Well, this is the beginning of the third season, I believe. I'm not sure. So, the turtles go through it. Spoiler alert Splinter dies. And they have to, well, he wasn't dead yet, but they have to run off. They have to run off to the uh, to the to like the like the like the woods, and and it's funny. There's a there's a really funny part there where Michelangelo goes, "Yo, we're turtles, man. We we're not supposed to be in woods. We're supposed to be in a sewer, <laughs> in, in tunnels in New York." And Donnie is like, "You're wrong, but apropos, like, yeah, we gotta get out of here." So. So Leonardo had a real bad uh, concussion and he was in a coma for a little while, kind of like Ralph in, 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 part, in part one of the movies. So Leo comes out of nowhere and he's like, yo, we are too involved with technology. Like we forgot how to be ninjas. So they do a fucking vision quest and they go into the woods with just like using themselves and they relearn how to be ninjas. Bro, and at the end of this like vision quest, they come out and there's like Japanese banners that they have on them. They made these like makeshift weapons out there. Bro, 
I understand people's weird nostalgia with the Turtles. And I understand that some of these shows were not great, but this one is good. Yeah. I'm a I'm a big lo-fi hip hop fan. And like while they're like jumping through the rooftops, you just hear some dope lo-fi playing. It's a decent show. Check it out, man. It's it's, it's fun as hell. And they understand that there's a whole bunch of baggage. So they do a lot of cool shit like that. The 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 Big Trouble Little China episode is 10 out of 10. Yeah, it's really good. Check it out. Even without the kids, check it out. I will go back <laughs> and see that shit though. Are you talking about the one that like the eyeballs are like like why it's CGI? Is that the one you're talking you about? The eyes are like they're yeah, they're white out like that, man. Yeah, so like in this one, because there was a there was a cartoon that the turtles did that their eyes were always white, which is horrible. This time they have pupils, but like when it's game time, when it's like they're no, about yeah, to yeah. get into it, it's like white. Yeah, there's, there's like a, four seasons of them, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, Nickelodeon. The latest yeah. one of Nickelodeon. It's CGI though; it's not drawn. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's one episode where. It's like the same uh, thing as the movie they did, the TMNT. Which was incredible. That movie yeah. was dope. TMNT was legit. Yeah. So there's one episode where Shredder's daughter, and they, they take some liberties with her too. She has like these snake powers or whatever. So she poisons the the, the, the team. Only Leo is left up. And Leo kind of is poisoning himself. And Splinter had taught him some like, you know, Naruto shit to like heal themselves. And there's a part where they're both like um, Splinter is using uh, he's in the he's in the hideout and he's using the the thing on April. She got bit, too. And then Leo is using it on himself. So there's like side by side just doing it and saying the chance. Yo, that is like a that is like a mic moment when, you know, Mjolnir came to cap. I got up. I said, <laughs> yes, this is what I'm talking about, because in the original Ninja Turtles cartoon, they do focus on a lot of um splinters japanese heritage here he is full on 100 japanese you know yeah. super like smart intelligent always with motivational quotes and he is he makes sure that these kids these ninja boys understand their japanese culture from splinter they respect yep. they respect every aspect of that show it's yeah. really well made man and there's also an episode where um they're in another dimension and they get caught and Michelangelo has to save him and he has to overcome his uh his that that, like that, his that, fear. that, like, that like pink dimension that everything's yeah. like blowing up those like yep. yo yep. he had to overcome his fear of being like inadequate and he realized that his his wonkiness is actually plays well to the dimension he's in and exactly. he actually becomes one of the best ones out of them because he's so he's so unorthodox that they can't get a read on him. So he actually ends up being like super smart. And all of the other turtles is like, yo, what the fuck is happening? Is the Mikey smart? Like what's going on? And he's like super into it. Yo, it's, it's a good it's show, that, man. It's that Deadpool effect. It's like, it's yo, a I, good it's show. So I'm glad that you watched that show. Yeah. So that show is really funny, man. I gotta go back. Yeah. I need to see that Mad Max episode. Cause I'm a huge, like I've, I've been a Mad Max fan for a little while, but then when Tom Hardy, did this shit in 2015. Yeah, apparently Furiosa was going to get like a spinoff, which... She is. She is. Is that still happening? It's still happening. Yeah. I need they to see that. The, they casted the girl and everything. I need to see that. Yeah. yeah. I was like, all right, so no Mad Max? Sorry for, the, sorry for the random Ninja Turtle rant. I I be telling these guys all the time. These guys are um, Ed, Krills, you know, uh, Fern. They're sick of, of hearing me talk about this show, man. <laughs> It's a good show, bro. It's a good show. They don't know what they're missing. And the crazy shit is I watched that show at work, so Krill's probably saw a couple of minutes of a couple of episodes. You know what I'm saying? It's the nostalgia thing. Yeah. I understand. But, like, that's when nostalgia can be toxic, when you are so into it that you don't even want to try yeah. something else. Yeah. And yeah. I tell people all the time, like, yo, there is a legit episode drawn in the 80s style. It's funny, too, because... They make the funniest joke ever because they're walking around in their uh, in the in the trench coats <laughs> and they're like, "This works!" Like they're gonna know they're gonna know we're turtles. 
It's so funny. You know, um, in that new season, they actually did a crossover with the old Ninja Turtles and the new ones, and they no. made they made mentions to the old ones like, we're not allowed to hit people, so they yeah. didn't know they actually didn't know karate in this in this episode, and they're like, no, bro, you're not tied by the rules from the people who draw you, and. They they actually learn that the shit that they practice they can actually hit people, so they beat the shit out of some of these dudes. It's actually pretty dope. Back then, back then it was just throwing. Yeah, yeah. And like you know they'll spin them on their legs and like throw them. That's the same thing that happened with the Spider Man cartoon. He wasn't yes. allowed to punch. So yep. I remember when you know now I like Spider Man a lot more. And you know contrary to what what what, what Mike said, yes, like my two, I am Batman and I am. Spider-Man, as ridiculous as Batman is. You know, it's funny because we're all, for the most part, Batman fans here, Mike, but we like to trash on Batman <laughs> whenever we get the opportunity. Yeah, we did a whole episode explaining how Batman will be worse for Harley Quinn than the Joker. Yo, it's a really <laughs> funny episode. A lot of people like that episode. They were like, yo, that's actually a good point. So I remember thinking to myself, like, before I was a real Spider-Man fan, I used to be like, yo, man, Spider-Man is kind of, like, lame. Like, he always has to like outsmart people. He doesn't really like use brute force. He doesn't hit anybody. He doesn't. And then years later, like about two years ago, I see that Marvel fact said he wasn't allowed. Like they, they, he wasn't allowed to be animated punching people. He can only kick and throw. So it's like, <laughs> oh, that makes sense. Which was funny because when he um when he gets the symbiote in that cartoon, mm -hmm. he's a menace. Yeah. He is like slamming shit on people. He's like killing people. Like that's what it looks like. I mean, yeah. not doing it, but let's let's get the symbiote in a in a new Spider Man movie. Would you prefer oh, to see? Would you prefer to see? Would you prefer to see Tom Holland with the symbiote or Andrew Garfield with the symbiote? I think it's easy. So I would say Tom Holland. Just 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 me. I want to see Garfield. In, in I want to see Garfield because he said he's already in a dark place. Yeah. I hear, I hear you, but give us our Spider Man. Like you already said, Tom Holland is our Spider Man, and there's other dimensions of Spider Man. Stop giving me these what if Spider Mans. You know, unless this is a real what if, and you're gonna have carnage, a real carnage, fight Venom, and then the the symbiote wars come out. Go all out with it. Go all out with it, or else leave me the fuck alone and just give Tom Holland the black suit. I don't. I'll yeah, be okay. I with, I'll, be, I'll be okay with really? anyone though. Oh, I'll be okay with any one of them. Yeah, I do like. I do want to see Andrew. I mean, he said he's been dark. That's why no, no, I kind of want to see that. Because and and we said it, yo. That's another thing. A lot of people are starting to show massive amounts of love to Andrew Garfield, and we've been saying it the whole time. His rendition of Spider Man is perfect. Quippy, funny. We say it all the time. His Spider Man was a little cool. It was a little too hipster. We say it all the time. His Peter but, Parker. His Peter Parker. Sorry. But I would like to see his Spider-Man in the symbiote, see how dark he can really get. Which reminds me, I sent this to Krills, because me and Krills have been talking a lot of Spider-Man stuff lately. So there's a scene in Spider-Man Far From Home that was cut out of the final product. This is a scene where Tom Holland is in the restaurant. He's fighting all of those thugs. You guys probably seen it. He has the iron spider suit on. They shoot him a few times, and he's like, bah, 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 and then he like falls over. Then he gets up, he's like, don't worry, it's just it's bulletproof. Then he keeps fighting. Then he's in a restaurant. He picks up a salt shaker. He goes, fresh ground pepper, anyone? And he's like, psh, psh, psh. like that was the most Spider-Man. Those five seconds was the most Spider-Man I've seen Tom Holland. And they cut it out of the movie. I don't know. There's Why? something about Tom Holland that doesn't strike me with the symbiote. It isn't, I don't know what it is. Something about him that I'm like... You can say the same thing about Toby, and he put it on. You can say the same thing. But wait, wait, wait. Yeah, but look what happened when he put it on. That's true. Yeah. But, but, but hold up. Spoiler alert. When my man said, I'm made dead, I'm going to kill this motherfucker, he yeah. got dark. He got dark there, yeah. He got but you know what's there. funny? I didn't buy it. When I mean, he said he, it, I was like, Because eh. technically, he's a 15-year-old kid talking about he's going to kill a grown man. I, that's but, what I'm saying is, <laughs> he tried. Yeah. He, he tried. Yo, he looked brolic, too. Like, he, you know. He put, he told me, Toby was like, yo, I'm a little older than you, bro. You're pretty strong, too. So, like, yeah, he tried. He tried. And I could be wrong. Give it to him. But I'm not buying it. I just, I don't know. It's just, it's just me. This is, this is, this is me being capped. 
But no, I, listen, I get it. Not but, but my thing Not is, if, you, if you're gonna do, soon. if you're gonna do a uh, uh, Andrew Garfield Spider Man again, be a grizzly. Like if you're gonna be a bear, be a grizzly. Go all, go all out. Fuck us like this is the last time you're ever gonna see us type shit. You know what I'm saying? No, I, uh, no, this is what, what's gonna happen. I'm trying to get like, these analogies. Yeah, like you're going to war. And yeah. Gonna, yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah. You're gonna go all listen, all give me I everything. I think what's gonna happen. I think what's gonna happen. Like we're gonna have multiple Spider Man doing multiple things. And if I can be honest, I mean, we did see the symbiote. The symbiote's in the MCU now. They let, he left a little drop in the Mexican yeah. restaurant uh, bar. So the symbiote is in the MCU now. So what I think is going to happen, I think Andrew gets sent back, but he gets sent back to a different time where Gwen and when Gwen is alive and where Gwen is spider Gwen. I think he's going to get sent back to that. So I think he's going to do some spider Gwen stuff over here and be in that universe which I think it's Emma Stone has actually said like, yo, I, I'm down to come back for, for Gwen Stacy, Spider-Man for Spider-Gwen. And then I think they'll have Tom Holland gallivanting over here in the MCU. And he might get the symbiote. <laughs> I don't think Toby's going to come back though. I don't know. Nah. What, what, do you, what do you think, Mike? Uh, I mean, I thought like this this last one with a little bit of the Spider Verse thing, the different spiders, the different universes is fine, but I think too much of it would get old. Uh, yeah. I'm not really I'm not really interested in seeing like five thousand different versions of Spider Man. So no Clone Wars uh, for you. <laughs> no, it's, uh, I mean the little bit of it. This it was cool seeing Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield in this movie, and you got. A little bit of it, I thought that was cool. Um, but I mean, me personally, I'm not into the whole uh, 500 different versions of Spider-Man. It's like you know, I got one Spider-Man. That's it. That's all I really care about. You know, and did they're doing watch, this with a lot of the characters. Did, you know, yeah. Did you watch into the Spider Verse, the the animated one? Yeah, I saw it. Uh, I thought it was all right, um, but I, I still. The thing that bothers me about it is the whole idea. They say, like, you know, anyone can be Spider-Man. But uh, to me, that doesn't make any sense. That doesn't really ring true. I think that's <sighs> how to say it. It's like, you know, you just put a costume on a person and say that, okay, now that person's the, that hero. Like you say, Captain America. Well, they say, like... uh Cap, it's it's not that Captain America, it's not that Steve Rogers is Captain America, it's that Captain America is Steve Rogers, because yeah. Captain mm -hmm. America, all of the elements, all of the history and everything about Steve Rogers is what makes Captain America who he is, mm -hmm. and so all of these elements, like how he grew up, all the different things that he went through, all that stuff. That's what makes the the character America who he is, and I think it's the same with any character like Batman or Spider Man, whatever. I mean, just because someone else could put on the suit and have like similar powers, it's like okay, fine, whatever. But I mean, what made Spider Man the Spider Man popular and made you know so many people like him is not just the powers in the costume; it's all of that. A part of Peter Parker, you know, all his trials and tribulations and his mm -hmm. personality and all that, that what's, that's all part of Spider-Man. That's not just part of Peter Parker. So that's why to me, I don't really like, just like with Wolverine, they got all these different versions of Wolverine and stuff. And it's like, I mean, you know, a girl with the freaking uh, thing coming out of her toes. It's like, okay, that looks fucking ridiculous. That's just. I, I like and it. So, <laughs> yeah, I, like, yeah. I like her. I like her. Sorry it, to hurt it, your feelings. No, no, no. Of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But no, no, no. I get it. I get it. Okay. it, it the the a, it one I'm, I'm not a fan of is his, is his son. The son. He has a son. Wolverine has a son. Oh, Deacon? um, yeah, Dakin. Uh, Dakin. Yeah. Dakin. 
Yeah, it's spelled Deacon, but it say Deacon. Yeah, something like I'm that. I'm not a yeah. fan of him at all. I'm like, oh, yeah, man. yeah. Yeah, take no. you take your sweet sour ass somewhere. No, but I I get what you're saying, Mike, because it's like when we have we already established 10, 15 years of the MCU with, and now we finally got Spider Man, and to give us three other different versions of him, it's like all right, now it's convoluted. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like yeah. how many Batmans are we gonna watch where we gotta see his fucking parents die in that alley? Yeah. You know, after a while, it's like all right, whatever. I'm well, not excited for this Batman movie. I'm, I'm gonna go watch you know. it. I'm just. I want you to guys get ready for for the fact that we're in the multiverse. We're going to see a whole lot of different everybody's. No. Oh, oh, yo, no. All of these, all of these reshoots right now that are happening for Doctor Strange. Get ready. It's cameo central that they're doing. What I what I hope doesn't happen with Multiverse of Madness is that they just try to introduce someone just to introduce them. And then we have this problem like, yo, that didn't even make sense, you know. And it's funny because I was reading this. I read this like three days ago. Apparently, in the movie, they originally didn't want, or the plan wasn't that Ned opens a portal and they come through. Apparently, and this was from screenwriters and directors that they said this, they were like, they wanted a, they didn't say who, but they they wanted a well-spoken Marvel character to come into this universe Find Tom Holland and say, yo, you're in trouble right now. I'm going to get these two other guys that are basically you from another universe, and they're going to help you out. So theories have been going crazy. They're thinking it's like Professor X and, you know, trying to introduce mutants into the MCU. And this beast. It's beast. (laughs) I mean, Yo, it's well stocked. Exa- but they well go. Spoken. Yeah. It's beast. No, I look. A lot of people have been saying this for like a good five, six years now. But I think it's finally happening, y'all. We will. This is. We have seven minutes left. This is the theory right here. We will see an X Men in Multiverse of Madness. Yo. We're gonna see an X Men. Cabs called out the what was it that you that you called out the theory that Spider Man might be in Hawkeye, and you know well, and then everybody else no no but everybody else was piggybacking on that yeah so you know we got ears there's ears listening to you Cabs so we might get an X Men no 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 we're gonna get it. oh I mean, we're gonna tec- get one all right technically there is a few X Men already in the MCU I mean Quicksilver Scarlet Witch is an X Men yeah you know, she is an X Men. Um, we uh, there's sub there's a, there's a a couple more that are like whatever, but like she's an X Men, but like we're gonna get like our first glimpse, and maybe it could just be subtle. Maybe you could just hear some. Maybe you just could see some claws. You could just hear ping. We're somebody's, gonna get it. somebody's playing the intro to the 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 animated series in the headphones walking down the street. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, oh my god, that'd be great. That'd be great. It's, gonna be, it's gonna be Sunspot. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. All right, but like, like it's gonna says, be on some. It's gonna be on someone's phone. Someone's yeah. phone is gonna ring, and you just hear, nee, 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 and we're just gonna be like, stop. We're gonna stop, and then we're gonna stay for the entire fucking movie, and then we're gonna stay for the post credit scene, and it's gonna be a fucking trailer to Morbius. Who knows? <laughs> Word. I'm but sick you- of Morbius trailers. <laughs> Every <laughs> movie I've seen in 2021 and, and 2020, it's a Morbius trailer, bro. Well, Stop. According to Cap, there's a theory out that Venom and Morbius are in the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man universe already. They are. They are because so, of Oscorp. No, I, I hear you. I get it. But, you know, stop. <laughs> stop fucking around. Stop fucking around. Because that's like, the, the you know, that is the cop out to... We can do everything that Spider Man does here, and now we just got a guy swinging webs on the MCU. He oh, doesn't have to face what... Venom. He doesn't have to face Punisher. He doesn't have to face Carnage. The fucking uh, the, the 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 Hunter doesn't have to come and get him. He could he could literally just be slinging around, slinging dick in a blue suit. No, but that's, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's exactly what they're doing, though. That's nah, exactly it. Then they're that's just, not a Spider Man. That's just no. That's, yeah, we got a Rackner yeah. Man in this fucking. They, they, they're <laughs> giving, Yo, we <laughs> got Daredevil in the MCU. Let's just be happy. That, that's true. That's MCU. true. Yeah, uh, and it's Charlie Cox. True. 
We got four one minutes. Time, gentlemen, one, one at a time. True, that's true. We got we got another twenty years of this shit. But we got four <laughs> minutes left, Mike. Uh, let everybody know where they can find you, and any upcoming projects or anything you want them to know. Uh, yeah. So I got uh, the website uh, rainyroadmedia.com. Uh, you can go there. Uh, I link a lot of stuff there, like the books on Amazon and stuff. And I have a newsletter I come out with like every couple of weeks on Substack. It's uh, rainyroad.substack.com. You can check out stuff there. I do like all the behind the scenes stuff, the process stuff, development. I, I show like a lot of the sketches and things about when we're working on stuff. And um, I'm on Facebook, Rainy Road. Um, on instagram rainy road underscore media uh and just basically the i would really appreciate it if people would uh check out the pre-launch kickstarter page and um consider clicking that notify button so we can try to help build some momentum from this thing hell yeah word and i have all the links on the chat now so people could go and hit that up and um, before we head out tomorrow, we'll watch episode three of Boba Fat. Uh, Thursday, we're going to talk about Battle of the Belts and everything else that happens on wrestling. The tone of the show, you know, we just fucking, we go crazy for that shit. Oh, and, oh, and Mickey, yeah. yeah, that's right. <laughs> Mickey James is going to be in the Royal Rumble. A TNA Women's oh, Champion really? is going to be in the WWE Royal yeah. Rumble. She's come back. Well, I guess it's a, it's a special one night only thing so far, but they, they're doing an interpromotional deal. But she's gonna they be in the Royal Rumble. They might with the men too. They're, they're thinking about that. Yeah, because they released almost like a hundred and something wrestlers over the last two years. The yeah. Royal Rumble. Yeah. They don't have enough women to do the Royal Rumble. They didn't have enough women before they did the releases. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're like but, they're, they're trying to pull from everywhere now. You know, boys are fun. Why tell anybody? It, 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 true. Yeah, unless I'm unless sorry. there's a bigger unless they're, they're trying to make a bigger deal with somebody else. But booty's Let's in the see. building. Uh, Pootie the Plastic, that's the dude we were talking about earlier with the, the he skyrocketed this year, the 3,500 uh, subs on YouTube. He does the music, the uh, reactions, and um, yeah, like, yo, we'll be back next week with some high fire. Yo, Michael, you are welcome anytime, man. It's a pleasure, man. pleasure talking Thanks, to you. Man. Thanks for coming, man. I really yeah. enjoyed it, guys. Yeah, we, I, I likewise. Hope, I hope I can come on again. Oh, definitely, yeah, definitely. We're going to definitely set time, that up. Hit us up, man. You're not doing nothing on a Tuesday. Want to talk some podcasts or some comics. You, you're you not doing nothing on a Thursday. You want to talk some <laughs> wrestling. You, Whatever. We got right. it all, bro. We yeah. do it all over That's here. That's it. All right, brother. <laughs> That's yeah. right. And on that note, it's your friendly neighborhood knuckleheads <laughs> signing out. Peace, everybody. Peace. All right, y'all boys. All right. press the button yeah it's 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 going it's just i had to turn off the the system volume so that way you don't hear a double yeah. of the the stream and all but yeah yeah i yo i gotta go